there we are. I wonder what the hell that was about. Alright, we're live now. Holy crap. Well, boom. Here we are. Hey, hey, hey. Who's in? Full, full, full moon picture games. Hey, 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 yo, hey, yo. Let's get the, uh, let's get everything up. How y'all doing? How you doing? How you doing on a fine Wednesday afternoon? My VTuber's expression is going a little nuts because I'm trying the detect um, expression thing. And uh, I guess it's just being like, why Why isn't your face moving? <laughs> so let's see. Uh, did it do? Where the fuck is game? There we go. Game capture. Yeah. Lookouts is up. Okay. Let's do that. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I had to click on it. There we go. That's how we get it to do the damn thing. And then game audio is also lookouts. And. Hmm. The game audio. Is either so quiet you can't hear it, or it's just not there. Damn, what is happening? Well, let's quit the game and then open it up again. Technical problems. What would a stream be without technical problems? Eh. Gotta have something. Gotta have some sort of reliability. Load. Nah, no, you still can't hear the game. What the crap? Oh, wait a minute. There we go. <laughs> there we go. For some reason, it had two different lookouts on the uh, on the thing. All right. So now we can get the chats popped up on there so I can actually see what the hell's going on in the funky town. Oh, don't start. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, we just started for God's sake. I don't need no more of this shit. Okay. Timer started. I didn't penalize the stream that nine minutes it took me to actually get to this fucking point. So, here we go. Hello. <laughs> Fucking hell. Let me see. There we go. We're back to the center. It is time, once again, for uh, us to go into lookouts. Because last time we did this on the subathon, it was. Uh, we were interrupted by my computer uh, just shitting the bed. And there was a theory at the time that it was because of. Uh, Essentially, my computer not being able to handle the game and OBS and Chrome and VC Face and all the various things. So this time around, I have got a backup plan. The, the, this detect fucking expression thing is driving me nuts. Okay, a uh, little behind the scenes stuff here, but I I, I got to turn this shit off. The, the <laughs> this detect expression thing is is... There we go. Simple. There we go. That is it. <laughs> Sorry. But it, it was driving me nuts. It was driving me nuts. Okay. Because I was just... All over the fucking place. Um, I got a backup plan. Uh, the fortunate thing is... Uh, as someone pointed out last time around, I do still have the uh, v like video tuber or something. I don't remember what the program is called, but it was um, what I was using to be a PNG tuber before switching to VTubing. Um, and as a result of that, um, I did some model work. As you may have noticed, my model is a little different now. Um, it's more closely reflective of the clothes I, I prefer to wear. Um, not that it was entirely inaccurate before, but, uh, 
but here we but i i have grown an affinity uh for the uh uh for the dark and flowy clothing but um but yes so uh if my computer starts to 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 shit the bed again uh we'll probably switch from vtuber to png tuber with updated uh models uh which were graciously helped out by Bree, who did some uh, photo resizing when I uh, stupidly took two big pictures of the model from uh, Vroid Studio. (laughs) So oopsie poopsie. Um, Either way, here we are once again, uh, going to play some lookouts. I don't know how close we are to the end, and I do know what I'll uh, be playing afterwards, if that is the case. I know Caleb's busy on Wednesday evenings, so it won't be uh, New Vegas. It won't be that. Um, As much as I've been wanting to play New Vegas, uh, again, it won't be that today. But um, if we we finish up Lookouts, then... uh, I have got a couple of ideas of what we could play. Does my fish just default to mad? <laughs> it's because I it's because I got resting autism face. Oh hey, first time chat from Max P- Pixels. Max Pixels. Yeah, that makes sense. Max Pixels. Sorry, it took me a second to understand your name. But hello, hello. A nice wave from you and a nice wave back. Oh, well, I am waving, but my, my my I don't have full body tracking, so I cannot wave back to you on there. But to trust that I am in real life. With the pot lifted, the fire rose, dancing in the wind, sometimes hazing your view, the blur flitting in and out as you glanced eyes while you ate. Believe it or not, I got... But I ain't the cookie. But What? But I ain't the cookie. Oh. (laughs) You aren't the one that cooks. I ain't the cookie. Sorry. Oh, man. Believe it or not, but I ain't the cookie back at camp. Someone else got that privilege. He was clearly joking, but the beans were some of the better you'd had. I never would have guessed. I don't cook that often, but I make some mean donuts from time to time. (laughs) Some mean donuts. Oh, you do now. Well, I'll have to try some then. Some them then. So try try them then. I'm out of practice. I feel like every time I come back in, I'm out of practice. And I need to do this more often. That's the only solution. I hope so. Dots. Oh, they're awkward and nervous. I'm so selfish to ignore his question. Saying nothing about Curly Wolf. So rude of you. You weren't raised like this couldn't, though. Never. Or more like you didn't know what to say. How many years had it been now? Dots. Sorry. I should have said something when you asked about my boss. I, I just... I get it. No, I mean... Of course you do, but... It's also that... When I said I was the quiet type, it's... More than that... I'm shooting straight with you. I don't remember the last time I heard my own voice before today. Whoa! Damn. At the camp, I might say, yeah, or no, but I don't really talk. And when I'm away on a lookout, there's just no one to talk to. Uh, I don't want to talk to myself and just be reminded I'm alone. I've never talked about him. Uh, I wouldn't. Joseph looked straight at you. Even into you, it almost felt like. You could see the fire between you and his eyes. Flames fluttering across the irises. The intensity of his look gave gave way to something like relief. Nah, don't worry about being a quiet one. I think it's part of your charm. There are lots of wannabe tough guys who want to act like you. No sweat. That strong, silent act. Besides, 
Guys back home were always telling me to shut up. <laughs> not that I gotta give them the not that I give them the satisfaction. I can tell you that being quiet doesn't change things. Same horse shit, regardless of whether you make a fuss. You sighed, a long sigh. What words could you even use for a man like him? Curly Wolf is a bad egg. I think sometimes he was born like that. I know he can't have been, but I don't know what godforsaken things happened to him to turn him into what he is. He's probably the meanest, roughest bastard you'll ever have the misfortune of meeting. Anyone you can think of that... What? Anyone you can think of that you wouldn't want to run into? He's worse than that. I don't know about Black Vulture, but the stories Curly Wolf leaves behind, I don't think they even match up to how dangerous he is. What? Away! Hold, 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 hold up. Just got a notification. From Cash App. I hadn't even really mentioned how people can donate to the... To the stream. But, uh... We got our first donation. Right, right away. Holy crap. Now, uh... Cash App uses real names, so I'm not gonna to, to say their name, but they know who they are, uh, presumably. <laughs> but thank you. They donated 50 bucks. Good God. <laughs> uh, let me get a pen. I gotta write it down. I'm gonna write it down. And today is the 13th. You know, you remember the math. I said math, for God's sake. Uh, it was, we got $50. 15 minutes. For every $5 donation, you get 15 minutes. And, yay, hey, Samuel Wright, how you doing? It's always a pleasure to see you as well. Two and a half hours. All right, thank you to, again, uh, uh, Bree is doing math. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, again, uh, uh, Cash App uses real names, Cash App and PayPal, you, which are both ways that you can donate to the stream. Uh, Sam Wright says hello to Bree as well. Um, Samuel Fisher says pook. Why does that sound like a 1930s slur? Anyway, um... <laughs> go ahead and pause the timer to do the math here. We stopped the timer at 7 hours, 19 minutes, and 14 seconds. So we got 7... 19... And 14, and that's plus... 2 hours, and... 30 minutes. All right. Guess that I am Samuel wrong today. <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, our new timer is at 9 hours, 49 minutes, and 14 seconds. 9, 49, 14. 9, 49, 14. Boom. All right. The timer has been star restarted. <laughs> the Battle of the Samuels. <sighs> All right, let's reset my position. Pop. All right, back to the center. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's fucking cool. 
And so yeah, we uh, oh shit. There we go. Sorry, my phone was being weird. Uh, so yeah, that that's hopefully we're going to be able to get through all of that if my computer lasts, if my health lasts. Um, but it, as always, if I can't, um, then the time will be written down, and uh, the start stream time of three hours will be added to it next time. Um, almost like a penalty for not being able to continue, uh, even though I know it's not a punishment for literally having technical issues or fucking health issues, but like, you know, um, that was what subathons always start with, with, for me, three hours. Oh, the fucking, yeah, the damn, the goal. We gotta add, uh, 50 bucks to that. I almost forgot. Uh, here we go. Yubba pong. Here we go. Goal amount. And we started with 110 plus 50. That's 160. I'm just going to say it ends. I don't fucking know. <laughs> go. All right. Here we go. My VTuber's stuck on being excited. Can I reset the face? Oh, it's because I typed. It's because I typed with the number pad. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> My hotkeys are tied to the number pad. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is happening? All right. So now the uh, the goal has been updated. The subathon bar has been uh, is getting closer to the goal. Hey Vicente, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? And we're good to continue. I've seen them gun down traders riding away on horseback, two hundred paces away. It's easy to get his dander up, and he's the last person you ever want to do that to. He made sure of that. Not the brightest you'd ever meet, but his instincts are keen. He's never made an empty threat, and he'll happily get his hands dirty to make good on him. You're making Joseph uncomfortable. Oh, no. Shit. <laughs> Mike Vulture said before he'd be willing to pick a fight with Curly Wolf, but they'd never met. Now I'm wondering if he has any idea what that would get him into. He ain't stupid, but he's definitely too cocky for his own good. Oh, each bull four gets cold. Nothing worse than cold food. What about, like, intentionally cold food? I don't understand. I don't know what to do. <laughs> you did as he said, mulling over what you'd talked about while you ate. Joseph had had a head start on you, but even so, he, he, even so, his eating was voracious, and he finished before you were even halfway through yours. What about all the people that we talk to in these visual novels eating like they've never eaten before in their lives? I mean, I'm not one to talk about that, but, but you know, having a fucking, you know, eating disorder, but, uh, still, it seems to be a common occurrence. I need a drink of water. How you doing, Google Krishna? Sup? He sat back from his hunch from his hunch over the bowl, wiping his beak on his arm. Looked around some, into the fire, out into the darkness of the desert. And you. You could tell he didn't want to stare, but his eyes took you in anyway with long glances. He coughed, clearing his throat to stall for the words he was thinking of. Say, um, uh, Calvin, uh, I wanted to ask. He grabbed his knife again, taking it to his wing once more. Looking away as he asked a common question. 
your arm. I hope you don't think it'd be cruel to be asking, but, um, what happened? Did he do that to you? You were pretty used to questions about it, but you appreciated the genuine warmth behind his words, at least. No, oh, this old thing. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. It was a practical joke of sorts, if you can call it that, by some of the guys during a camp. A practical joke? To fucking take off an arm? Jesus Christ. Took my bandana and shoved it in the mouth of one of, my, one of the horses. Egged me on to get it back. Reached my hand in, and of course the hoss gets all antsy and bites down, starts thrashing, trying to get away. I don't remember much after that, blacked out from the pain. Next thing I... Gee, oh, Joseph's getting mad. Next thing I know, I'm being hauled to some doctor. Told me they had to amputate for it before it petrified. Joseph stopped preening at this point, looking at you with some real watery eyes and a soft expression on, the, on his brow with both anger and horror. Got the bandana back, so, you know, win some, lose some. Oh, man. Man. That is fucked up. You can, it's like... Calvin's got nowhere else to fucking be, so he has to put up with this shit treatment. <sighs> Getting into uh, exploration and abusive relationships, I didn't expect that. I'm sorry. Nothing to be sorry for a long time ago. Just gotta live with it. Full and finished, you set aside your bowl, taking another appraisal of your surroundings, looking up to the sky and its carpet of stars. It's quickly starting to get cold, so you got up and went to your horses, fishing some blankets out for them. Looking inside the bag, you couldn't find your extra, your usual extra blanket for yourself. Uh, shit, must have forgotten to take it before you left. You spied your binoculars in there. You took them, walked to the edge of the cliff again. You're about to put them up to your eyes when you realized you didn't need them to see what was happening in Clemency. The whole town was dark, except for the bright lights prominently shining from the saloon. You saw the shallow silhouettes of people dancing, play, dancing, play, of dancing, play out across the street in front. And if you listen very closely, music. Seems like they're having a rip-roaring time. Yeah. I wondered if they would do it tonight. I wondered if they'd do it tonight. Like Bartholomew, men Bartholomew mentioned. Why wouldn't they? What they got to be worried about? His voice is a little cold. Oh. Why wouldn't they? What they got to be worried about? I... Oh, that was more sarcastic than anything. I can't scroll back in this game. They took that away. I don't know if this is running in RenP, and I don't want to fuck around on my computer to check. It seemed like my computer... The, the CPU spikes when you start fucking moving shit around in your computer, so I don't, I don't want to fuck around. Um, anyway. Ice cubes and a drink bumping your teeth as you sip. You know. You know, out of all the towns I've been kicked out of and run out of, kicked out and run out of, this is the only one I'd want to come back to. This place ain't for us. We're trouble, Calvin. We're no good for these folks. Tomorrow we'll be gone. We'll tell our bosses we didn't find anything. And if we're lucky, they'll just go on their way. Maybe in another life we could have gone back there. It would have been nice. But this is our life. Our only one. It is what it is. We move on. That's how we live. You could feel the wind blowing behind you, ruffling your trousers, whistling past your ears as if it seemed to push you towards the edge of the cliff. Yeah. I guess it is. The wind kept howling, picking up and dying down, 
whistling off the valley and kicking up clouds of dust around the buildings down below. Curly Wolf's going to ransack this place, even if they don't have anything. And what do you want me to do about it, huh? Galvin? Not my problem. You feel now the desert night on you. Your fingers, the tip of your ears, starting to feel the tenderness of the cold in the wind. He was shivering. He shouldn't have talked back to him. He knew how that always went. It never ended well. He just made him feel worse, like it was his fault. Why should he have to listen to your stupid concerns? It was your shit to figure out. He owes you nothing. You just met. You don't know each other. If it weren't for convenience, you would have shot each other hours ago. You hear the sound of shuffling behind you as he got up. He started walking towards you. Here it came, as you knew it would. You tensed up, you tense up as he approaches, closing the distance, expecting the due anger. Closing your eyes when you feel him at your back, ready to, for the blow that's coming. You flinch when you feel a weight around your shoulders. A squeeze of them, too, that you expect to hurt, but it's so tender that it couldn't possibly. Opening your eyes, you see a thick blanket draped around your draped around you down to your knees. You look cold. Don't want to get consumption just standing there. You know how cold the desert gets. You drop the binoculars gen gingerly by its strap to the floor now clasping the edges of the blanket with your hand tighter around you. You could feel how cold your fingers were, just below your chin, almost numb. How long had you been standing there for? I'm dreadful sorry. You got nothing to be sorry for. You and he sat back down by the fire, Joseph giving it a thousand-yard stare. Thank you. Nothing to it. Get warm. You pull the blanket tighter again. The desert chills still weeping under, sweeping underneath. Are you not cold? I've been around the fire all night, haven't I? I'm fine. He's lying. You can see his feathers twitch and shiver, but he's trying hard to hide it. You wonder the truth of what he said, too, that we just had to move on. Standing up with a blanket, you walked around the fire, standing over him a moment as he looks up towards you with wide eyes. Oh, oh that's sweet. You sweep the blanket around him and sit down, shoulder to shoulder. You were right, he's definitely cold, but a lot warmer than you'd imagined. This looks like more than a hug, but I'm just going to assume that it isn't unless we're told explicitly otherwise. I told you I'm fine. Don't give me that blow, tough guy. I know you're not. Looks like he's going to say something, but he just shuts his beak. He suddenly seems a lot warmer. I'm sorry. I didn't mean what I said. I know. That wasn't the fellow I've been around all day. I'm just... scared. He nods softly, as to be almost unnoticeable. Yeah. More scared than I ever have been. Together you huddle, bringing the blanket tighter and tighter and moving closer to each other. He smells like the desert, dusty and sweaty. Why is this so warm? Why, why do you feel like this? Not warm like you're around a fire, but 
like there's a fire inside you. Warm coals shifting around inside and embers spitting in your throat. Have you ever felt like this before? Joseph, I... He looks at you. Your face is so close to together, and this is what I th thought the picture looked like. You lean your head into his shoulder, staring into the wild dance of the fire. I haven't met someone like me before, or someone like you. You're extremely kind. Even to a stranger like me, I, I wish I could know you more than these few hours. I know I have to ride back in the morning, but of all the hopes I've hoped, the strongest is that I could just stay here. That the sun would never rise. I don't want to go back. You stay clinging to him. After a few moments, he pulls you tighter. I have to say, I feel the same way. I can see in you someone who's faced many hardships. Someone who deserves better, worked harder than any of the lump suckers back where you've come from. A couple of queer fish in a barrel, I'd say. Lord knows how we found each other. The sun will come up again. And we'll have to go our separate ways. We don't have another choice. I just wish it wasn't so... I wish... You lift your head to look at him, but he just gives you a look and turns back to the fire. What are you thinking? He sighs wearily, like he's been asked to carry the world on his back. It's a flight of fancy, that's all. It's not... realistic. You look at him curiously, catching his eyes. He looks at you, almost for approval before he thinks about what he wants to say. I wish we could run away. That's it. The two of us, far away from everyone and everything. Ride east till we know no one's chasing us. That sounds nice. You both cuddle for a little while longer, sitting close and resting your heads together. The thoughts of running away take over in your mind. Is that what you want? As if he could read your mind, Joseph asked, What do you want to do? You thought more. <laughs> no one had ever really asked you that, and even so, you knew what you wanted to say. I'm tired of running, Joseph. I, I want to fight. I want to kill Curly Wolf. Really? It's the only way I can think to be free of him. You know as well as I do, you don't get to just up and leave. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to be free of Black Vulture too, but do you think that's something you could do? Kill him? I can't do it alone. Our gangs, Joseph, they're going to destroy this town. And after, if we run away, we'd never be safe. We'd be looking over our shoulders the rest of our lives. I don't want to run away from things anymore. I want to run toward a better life with you. Joseph's eyes were sympathetic, but his expression was of discomfort. Uh, I think you're right, and I do want to help you, but I'm useless in a fight. I, I can't shoot straight. I don't want to die, Calvin. I wouldn't let that happen. I'll keep you safe. We can keep each other safe. We haven't been living our lives, Joseph, just surviving. 
something better than that is worth dying for, I think. A fight feels inevitable. We should face it. You really that desperate to get out? You nod, head held against his shoulder. He sighs that same sigh again, long and heavy, almost theatrical if it weren't for stakes laid out before you both. I think you're Ryan. A chance like this won't come again. I, I might even be tempted to call it fate. We should talk to Sheriff again, I think. Somehow, if we can. He yawns. I don't know what we're gonna do, but we ain't gonna figure it out when we're bone tired. We should get some sleep. Good morning, we'll talk more, figure something out, and then... Yeah, the sweethearts, yeah. Hope on a kiss and a prayer that we make it out alive. He chuckles. Ain't that the story of our lives? This will be the last time we have to fight like this. This will be the last time we have to fight like this. I swear it. You both fall asleep against each other, dreaming of that promise. Praying for a better tomorrow and willing to fight for it. A pile of rocks, a pile of rocks, <laughs> a pile of rocks. Just want to say real quick, <laughs> just in case you never know. It wasn't the red morning sun, now risen just above the horizon that had woken you. Nor was it the gentle slumbering breath of Joseph against your neck doing its best to lull you back to sleep. What well, woke you wasn't even the familiar crick at the base of your tail from sleeping on the bedroll. Stiffness, you couldn't wait to stretch out. It was your thoughts. All the thoughts in your mind like so many wild horses running of what may come next. What you both had to do. The nights spent on a lookout were better than the sleepless nights back at camp, but you still dreaded the dawn that came after. At least you had Joseph this time. At least you had him for what was to come, you hoped. You could feel one big wing of his wrapped around your stomach shifted as he started to wake now, wake too now. As much as you wanted to keep lying here with him for just a few more minutes, you knew you had to get up. Coffee wouldn't brew itself. He peeled back the blanket as little as you could to let yourself escape, gingerly untucking Joseph's fingers from your side. Sliding off the bedroll and through the dirt, you let Joseph's arm down gently. Crouching low on your knees, you gave his hand a gentle squeeze, feeling the soft, dry, dusty feathers beneath your fingertips. Holding this moment in your head, that it might stay there. You stood up, dusting yourself off everywhere you could. Time to get ready. Even with Joseph here, your morning routine was mostly the same. Just doubled, you suppose. Feed and water the horse, or horses, both of them. You're gonna take some cold medicine and rest, enjoy the game? Uh, yeah, well, and I hope you feel better, Vicente, and enjoy your cold medicine, and rest up. Uh, have a wonderful night. Uh, make a pot of coffee, double the mounts, though. Let it brew for a little longer, too, on the same fire that you did use last night together. Keep thinking of while the coffee boiled, there weren't many things you didn't have time to think about yet. Sorry, my headphones were on my ear weird, started to hurt. Even so, unimportant thoughts still rose. An unimportant thought, it kept bubbling up. How nice it was to not have the usual knot in your stomach. The tightness that twisted every time at camp when you had to get food or a drink. To use the same tools in the same space as the others. It was nice to not have to worry right now, you thought, 
about sharing this. Joseph wouldn't complain about having to get coffee from the same pod as you. He wouldn't get angry that you were handling his stuff. What the fuck? Oh! <laughs> Despa! Well, hey! Uh, oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. No, no. <laughs> I was having such a good time, and then you made me so uncomfortable so fast. Well, you don't like a hundred kisses. No, I like a hundred kisses. It's just only being grabbed by the face <laughs> with no prompting <laughs> in this exact moment. Sometimes, sometimes it's nice. Hi, Despa. Uh, Despa reminded me uh, with this, that subscription, which, by the way, we need to add to the total. That's that's another five bucks added to the donation. Thank you. Uh, that I did, in fact. Uh, uh, huh. Jeez, that I did, in fact. Sorry, Jesse just made a loud noise from the other room. Um, <laughs> that I did, in fact, update the alert box. <laughs> uh, because the, the Streamlabs alert box was always so slow and so jankety. Um, and I found that Twitch had a built-in alert box system. So I figured I'd, I'd use that. And... <laughs> I'd forgotten I had done that until fucking that's a lot of nuts <laughs> just popped up. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's add 15 minutes to the timer. Uh, as Bree heads down to the laundry room, thank you, thank you, Bree. All right, it has been paused at 9:21:18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Boom. All right. And then let's update the donation goal. I love you. Okay. Hundred and sixty-five out of two thousand. There we go. All right. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> I keep forgetting that I type with the number pad, and the hotkeys are tied to the number pad. We have nine hours, thirty-five minutes, and thirty-six seconds left on the uh, the timer. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> oh, yes, I, 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 I updated the alert box as much as I could. I also did uh, throne integrations. Um, my throne wish list has now been integrated to the alert box. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, I haven't updated my throne wish list in forever, but... Um, but that's there. Um, ooh, my caps lock was on. What the hell was that about? Uh, oh, my eye hurts. What the hell? Why does my right eye hurt? Let me just take a drink of water real quick. I seem to be having a fucking stroke. Okay. Okay, I'm back. I'm good. Uh, hello, Despa. <laughs> the Omni Mod has arrived. Going back to the game now, could it have always been this easy? Your stomach rumbling snapped you from your thoughts. Of course, you'd forgotten breakfast. You went back to your bag and unwrapped some salted pork. 
holding it between your teeth and tearing a chunk off. You always liked how chew it was when you weren't in a rush. The rhythm of your jaw grinding it up helped you think. That's how I feel about grape nuts. But I also have TMJ problems, so I can't have too many grape nuts. Besides, a box of grape nuts is only good for like two bowls. It's weird. Very small box, grape nuts. Possibilities were rolling around in your mind. Die cast along the branches of a tree. A tree. <laughs> How things might play out. Although you couldn't just keep it to yourself now. For better or worse, this was about the two of you. There was both weight and comfort in that thought. As you watched the pot start to bubble and steam, you heard the sound of sleepy shuffling, turning to see a waking Joseph. He's so small! He's so small! He's so small! He was propped up on one elbow, blearily trying to figure out what was in front of him, rubbing his eyes with one winged hand. He saw his pupils contract to the morning sun that was getting brighter and brighter, focusing on you. Uh, morning, partner! Is that the sweet smell of coffee I smell brewing? Not sure I'd call it sweet. You looked into the pot at the dark brown tar-like substance, grinning the large snoutful you got of its acrid, bitter scent. Well, the idea is sweet to me at least. Stuff's damn near magic as far as I'm concerned. With surprising energy for someone who had just woken up, Joseph whipped the blanket off of him, standing and dusting himself off. You watched still. You watched still as he stretched. The fuck does that mean? His fingers locked together, wings pushed and pulled in front and behind. The way his feathers, the way the feathers of his neck parted and gruffled as he rolled his head around his shoulders. The hem of his shirt, usually tucked in, but now loose after a night's sleep, rising ever so slightly as he twisted his body. He sighed as he finished, wings on his hips, and met his uh, met eyes with you. What are you looking at? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> a shy smirk crept across his face as he tucked his shirt back in and walked over to you. What you eating? Salt pork. There's some in my bag if you want. I think I will, thank you kindly. Can you get some cups too? This coffee looks about done. You look behind you at Joseph, crouched as he dug in your, into your bag, giving you a quick thumbs up. You turned to the pot again and stirred it with a spoon a little. Joseph came back round and sat beside you, setting two tin cups on the ground with one hand. His beak tore at the piece of jerky in his other hand, hungrily swallowing it down after a few chews. Picked up the pot and poured bo you both a hot cup, eagerly tapping his cup with yours before drinking. Cheers. You both sipped quietly. You could feel the heat of the coffee traveling all the way down your gullet, burning in your belly. How'd you sleep? Good. Like a pup. Didn't wake once. Me too. Slept better than I have at, at that hotel I stayed at one time. I swear the sheets on that bed were the softest darn thing I'd ever touched. Sounds nice. Damn, I was just checking the audio levels to see how much of how how loud uh you could hear Jesse talking in the other room. <laughs> He's in a whole other room and he was still being registered on the mic, but hey, whatever, man. <laughs> Dude's letting me Dude, he and my brother Aaron are letting me stay at his house. I'm not going to fucking get pissed about him being loud while I'm streaming in his living room. Like, the last thing I'm going to do is get persnickety about that. Like, oh no. <laughs> anyway, it was. Last night was nicer, mind you. Another silence between you now. Like you were both, likely, likey, likely we were both thinking the same thing. Thinking about last night, what you talked about. Silence, because if neither of you spoke, maybe nothing would happen. Maybe the world would stop turning and the 
sun would stop rising. Of course, it still does. You can see it charting its course away from one horizon to the next. So. So. <laughs> Sorry, that was one of the horses in the background. What's our plan? Joseph shuffled a little, legs restless. We kill Curly Wolf and Black Vulture. Hey, Mike de Argon! Hello, can't stay long, but I ha but because you have to work, but wish to say, wish you luck today, Vivian. Have a good day. Love your new avatar. Thank you. Thank you very much, and good luck at your work today. Have a wonderful day at work, Mike de Argon. <laughs> How close can I get to the mic before it fucks up the avatar? To the mic, it's meant, I meant the camera. Okay, that's as close as I can get. Okay. How far can I get? Well, I hit the wall behind me, so this is as far as I can get. <laughs> I wish I had a waistline like that. You fucking kidding me? <laughs> uh, excuse me. That's what we said, right? You nodded. Maybe we don't have to... We could just run away. We talked about that, Joseph. If we run, we'll spend the rest of our lives looking over our shoulders. We'll never really be safe. Yeah, you're right. Besides, have you never thought about it? Of course I have. It's not that simple, though. Everyone around them is loyal. It'd be hard to even get the chance. Even if I killed him, I wouldn't get away with my life. And even when I thought about it, thought about the ideal world where he got a bullet in his brain and I'm home free, there's nothing after, Calvin. I could never see what would happen in the rest of my life. It was blank. Just a desert. If you were to kill him now, what do you... S if you were to kill him now... What do you see? Joseph looked ahead, thinking. The feathers on his face fluttered in the wind. Something, I suppose. Not nothing, at least. I think maybe I can trust that. Are we really going to be able to kill him, though? I don't know. If they bleed and die like anyone else, it's just hard to get the chance. At some point, our gangs are gonna go to clemency and take us with them, whether we like it or not. I think we should try to use that to our advantage. Unfamiliar place, for them, at least. What about everyone in town? They shouldn't have to be involved with this. They're already involved. We can't change that. I just wonder if any of them would help us. <laughs> I doubt it. Do you think... He looked at Joseph, and he turned to look at you, too, his brow furrowed. Sheriff? You felt a cold dread wash over you, even in the heat of the morning sun. No, I don't think Sheriff wants anything to do with us. We'd be dead before we even cross the town line, remember? I know, I know, I just... There was something about it, how Sheriff was when we were told to leave. I don't know if I fully believed it. Sorry, Joseph. I think that's just wishful. Well, sorry, Joseph. I just think that's wishful thinking. Hey, you listen to me now. I ain't making it up. His voice was suddenly sterner. The timidness that had been in his voice now gone. I'm telling you, Sheriff. I'm telling you, Sheriff. I'm telling you, Sheriff. I'm telling you, Sheriff. I don't think Sheriff wanted to tell us to leave. There was something far too sad about it. And Bree is back. Bree is back. Bree is back. Bree is back. And Bree is back. Bree is back. Bree is back from the laundry room. Bree is back. 
<laughs> she almost fell over. Brie is back. Do 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 do. Brie is. Oh jeez. <laughs> You saw it too, right? I'm not imagining it. You thought back. It hurt too much to dwell on it, but now you thought about it, you had to agree. It wasn't like other times when you'd seen been exiled or barred from places. There was anger, but there had also been there was also frustration. Disappointment. That wasn't normal. You might be right. Even so, I don't think we can go waltzing back into clemency and expect Sheriff to welcome us with open arms. We still don't even have a plan. I think we need to talk to Sheriff. Even if we don't have a plan, Sheriff needs to know what's coming. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I just don't know how. We need to get we need to get to sheriff without being seen ideally I don't want to risk getting shot however unlikely without being seen set your coffee down getting up and walking to the edge of the cliff I don't know what Bree's doing she's walking around doing a whole bunch of shit she's doing something when she gets up and starts walking around and digging into stuff, she she does it with, like, all of her. You know what I mean? You know, people who could just, like, look around the room with their eyes and they just sort of examine things? She doesn't do that. She gets up. She walks around the whole shit. Digs with her hands and her feet and her arms and shoulders. She does it, the whole thing. It's, it's, a, it's a whole ass show. Are you talking about me? I sure am. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you imply I'm putting on a show? <laughs> I don't think you're putting on a show. I'm just saying it's a show. It's something to watch. I can't help but watch it because it's so fucking distracting. How dare you? How dare you? It's like our Lord and Savior Ronald Reagan. Oh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Choke on them words. <laughs> well, if we kill enough poor people, then the country will will be better off for it. And fuck, I fucking god, I, there wasn't even a joke. I just hate Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Christ. We haven't gotten to Ronald Reagan yet, but, uh, I mean, I made it past Andrew Jackson and James Buchanan, so I've, I've made it past presidents who logically did worse things, but the problem is that I didn't have to, like, well, see, I can't even say that I, I don't live through the direct impacts of people like... Andrew Jackson and James Buchanan because like the long term effects of the Civil War are felt through like <laughs> uh, modern day oppression of fucking minorities and uh, segregation felt through marginalized uh, societies and everything like that and so I guess yeah it, it's it's hard to name a main character after a president you don't like. Um, and being a presidential history nerd, this is way more information than you fucking asked for. I'm sorry. It's not. I, oh, exactly okay. What I was oh, okay. I'm just sorry. <laughs> um, being into presidential history is... It started being like, oh, look at this. this is, I was you know, being into the succession line and all that. And now it has become accepting how it, that it is a, a timeline of shit. 
Like just bad decisions. Yeah, because the presidency is not where greatness happens. It's where bad things get blamed and good things get ignored. Yeah. Um, because bad things routinely come from the White House and good things routinely are done in spite of the White House. Um, because the power to do good things is not given to the president. Yeah. It's given to Congress, but they don't do it very often. But because there's too many members of Congress, they don't get the blame. So do you think Reaganomics actually has anything to do with Reagan himself? That one is tricky because when you name a policy after a person, typically it's one of two things. One, it's intrinsically tied to them because they had something to do with the planning, or it's tied to the popularism uh, I don't know if it's popularism or uh, he basically the cult of personality style politics uh, surrounding the party at the, of the time yeah. like how modern day Republicans will say that they're Trump Republicans um, even if they don't run their policies by him because he's not a fucking policy guy. Yeah. Um, he's just a figurehead. Yeah, he's just a figurehead. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know what policies are. He's too stupid for that. Um, and Reagan, while being more intelligent than Donald Trump, low bar, I know, also didn't have much to do with policy decisions. He was a figurehead. He was called the great communicator because he was an actor he was there to communicate ideas that other people made however he was there as the promoter and as uh, the one who convinced people to vote for things so he was as much a great communicator as he was a great enabler right yeah so whether or not someone builds a bad plan Build a barn, dumbass. Build a barn, dumbass. <laughs> what is this, 1785? 1785. Um, <laughs> it's cult of personality. I think they could see him punk. Nice. Um, coming back to Raw um, soon, I think. Um, but no. Um, he would use his sway over the party to basically convince people like if you don't do what i'm telling you to do you're not gonna be elected ever again which now in the days of social media is more prevalent with trump just being like don't vote for this fucker because you said uh, i suck but like reagan would do it behind closed doors because he had a public image of the the lovable grandpa right Exactly. So, no, Reagan, Reaganomics was Reagan's fault, even if he wasn't the architect of it. Yeah. Not that I didn't appreciate it. No, you're good. No. Okay. Jay, you're absolutely right to, to be fucking pissed at uh, Ronald Reagan for Reaganomics. He should also be pissed at his economic advisors, the Congress of the time. Um, his, oh, oh, yeah, the whole fucking... He had one of the most corrupt cabinets and administrations of the 20th century, um, and that includes fucking Warren Harding, for God's sake. Biden administration? Uh, I'm talking the ad administration. I'm not talking all of... I'm talking about the Trump administration. Okay, the Trump administration is not our current system. Right, yeah. <laughs> but also, like, Congress is, to me, the worst it's ever been. But granted, oh, yeah. did I live in 18 fucking whatever? No. No. Today's Congress is known for being the do-nothing Congress for a reason. Um, it famously had does 
less now than it has done either ever or less than it has done in for a long fucking time. Um, but just talking about presidential administrations, Trump's uh, administration was incredibly corrupt and was by far the worst of the 21st century. Mind you, not many administrations in the 21st century yet. But if that, you know, out of uh, Bush Jr., Obama, Trump, and Biden, you know, you got two Republicans, two Democrats. He is by far the most, he had by far the most lawsuits, the most uh, corruption scandals. He was the only one out of the four to be impeached. Uh, he's the only president in history to be impeached twice. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, there is an argument to be made that he is in the top five most corrupt in, uh, presidential administrations of all time. Um, and I think the only reason why didn't Trump have links to the mafia? I don't know. Um, I don't know about that personally. Well, that's my new short story. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. The only reason why I would assume not is because quite frankly he just he gives off the vibe of someone who thinks they're a mob boss when really they're not yeah um I mean he was endorsed by the KKK yeah and then he tried to pretend he didn't know who they were yeah that was cringe um but no yeah um I I think one of the main reasons why Trump was not a the worst president of all time was because of the safeguards of us learning from history. True that. Because if Trump, a person like Trump had been president back in like 18... without all the lessons from history that we have, then it would have been far more destructive. True. Um, but now we have safeguards, election rules, we have election monitoring, safer elections than ever before, um, more federal oversight, state oversight, um, proper legislative and judicial controls. I really think election day, any, like election days should be uh, paid holidays. Yes, election days should be paid holidays. Uh, I absolutely agree with that. Election day should be paid holidays, the electoral college should be banned, the senate should be combined with the uh, House of Representatives. The Senate is uh, an unconstitutional body. See, and like, I would agree that the Electoral College would have merit if it were the fact that all states got an equal amount of seats. Because I think, isn't that what it was meant to do? It was meant to be like, well, to make sure that everyone has the same power in voting? No. No, the, the point of the Electoral College, in a nutshell, because it was more, because of course this is America and everything has to be more fucking complicated when it comes to elections, the point of the Electoral College was to establish a body of representatives to essentially establish the assumed population of a state. You get a minimum plus your population. Um... So no matter how few people lived in your state, you got a certain amount, and then if you have more people, you got a certain amount more. However, that is based off of a census, congressional districting, um, and there's no safeguards to force electors to actually do their jobs in most cases, so they can just vote for whoever. Um, plus, uh, it was not intended for accurate representation or small states to get their thing. That's a myth. The whole point, essentially, was to simplify the process because there was no easy way to count the popular vote across big state lines back in 17 fucking hundred. Right, they needed that. They needed a person to be like, okay, this is the general vibe of our entire state. Exactly. And vote accordingly, whereas now... It's all digitalized. You can get a very accurate popular. Okay. Yeah. A very accurate and very safe vote. Election fraud 
has proven to be a extremely overblown in terms of fraudulent votes extremely overblown concern not something that we shouldn't be on the lookout for oh, yeah. lookout being the game name of the game we're looking lookouts being the name of the game we're playing at some point during the stream but uh <laughs> whenever we get back to that but um <laughs> me asking you a simple question us talking about politics for like eight hours yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta get through this timer somehow right uh, if anyone wants to extend the chat about the Electoral College, you can donate $5 or more for 15 extra minutes. But anyway, um, that was one of the main uh, uh, benefits to a representative democracy was that people who weren't given the right to vote could assume that people who were supposedly, they were essentially telling poor people, I know better than you trust me with your ability to vote which is the whole reason why we revolted in the first place but whatever um trust me with your voice and then i will do what i think is best for you you know what's so funny in the whole uh, that's the whole reason we revolted point mm -hmm. it's like it's literally kind of the historical equivalent of you grow up to become your parents yeah <laughs> you know we're just I get it. We got you. Got to make the mistakes to really learn from them sometimes. Mm -hmm. But like, it's also just kind of ironic a little bit. Oh yeah, I mean the the big phrase was no taxation without without representation. Right. Look at Puerto Rico. Right. Yeah. No shit. They literally have no representation, and they're constantly taxed beyond fucking compare. Oh, I'm gonna get angry about Puerto Rico. Yeah, because you're Puerto Rican. Um. Meanwhile. Because and, and not just about Puerto Rico, but because of the Senate, we bringing it back to how that's a non -con, an unconstitutional body. The original purpose of the Senate, according to the Constitution, and this is why you should always be fucking wary of people who are like, I'm a strict constitutionalist, because yeah. those are people who are living in the f fucking dark ages in terms of law. According to the Constitution, and this has been amended. But according to the Constitution, the original purpose of the Senate was to have uh, appointed representatives from the states. Yeah. You did not vote for your senator. You got, you know, and, you know, we all get two per state, which means everyone gets the same amount no matter how fucking many people live in your state. So West Virginia gets the same amount of uh, uh, representation in the most powerful body in the Congress as California, Texas, Alaska, like, Alaska's obviously less, but that's my point. It's like, that's why Mitch McConnell from fucking, what, Kentucky? Yeah. Has so much fucking power. Meanwhile, and, and, and if, turn this around, if you don't like, if you don't like Democrats, Bernie Sanders from Vermont. Who the fuck is from Vermont? <laughs> Name one person from Vermont, you're probably just going to name Bernie Sanders, because that's the only motherfucker you know, other than Ben and Jerry's. Lincoln. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what makes me the angriest about the territories, besides, you know, the... <laughs> besides the tourism, the gutting, the, the cultural erasion, and all of that stuff. Uh, apart from all of the other reasons to be yeah, mad. Ap uh, uh, apart from all the oppression is, disproportionately, all of the uh, American territories, not just Puerto Rico, but uh, Guam, Samoa, Dominican Republic. Yeah, they have a disproportionate amount of the young adults that go into the army. They're veterans. Yep. And then some of them only have one to zero vet hospitals. Mm -hmm. So they just serve their country, get all fucked up from PTSD and physical ailments and everything else and you know maybe they did have like a desk job and they're fine but the point is they go back home to rot yep. and there's no help from them unless it's for a 12 hour flight and we know how expensive airplanes are Boeing is falling apart yeah <laughs> and that, that would require them to leave their entire fucking family forever yeah and like the VA is already shit like, the VA should be one of the most funded fucking programs 
ever. If this country actually gave a fuck about their veterans as much as they say they do, but you can you can say whatever you want about the military industrial complex, which it is a terrifying fucking thing, and we should definitely cut our military budget, but the majority of our military budget, as far as I'm concerned, should be taking care of the veterans. Because they're the ones that actually did the thing. One of the leading causes of death among people in the military is suicide. Yeah. That's fucking horrifying. While we're in active war, people dying from training, from disease, and from suicide before they even get to or back from war, they're dying from things that have nothing to do with the war itself, but the repercussions from being in the military. Like my Grandpa Angelo. Like your Grandpa Angelo. Fought in Vietnam, went through all the horrors of that, died because of contaminated water in this camp. Yeah. Undocumented. Mm Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Yeah, and they didn't catch it until two generations later. Yeah after you already passed and everyone was like what the fuck is going on because the doctors were like there is something going on but we don't know what because we're the VA and we have no funding (laughs) they got no funding and we have so many houses that are just left vacant owned by companies owned by Black Rock I don't know what (laughs) Black Rock I don't know what I'm, I'm in the middle of a sentence. I don't know what BlackRock is. Um, they're owned by so many companies, owned by so many banks, left vacant, owned by cities, owned by nobody sometimes. If you made it tax deductible, because that's all the fucking capitalist system cares about is tax breaks. Uh, God forbid you just do something decent. Um, if you made it tax deductible through a veteran's welfare system to give rent or housing assistance from homes that you own or uh, uh, homes that you have in your city to homeless veterans, homeless people, people in search of jobs, in search of ways to better themselves, work programs, all these other things... I guarantee your crime rates would go down, your education systems would go up, your health system, your health costs in your community would go down, your happiness rate in your community would go up because at the end of the day, all of those things are affected by people's ability to live. Crime affected by people's ability to live. Food cost affected by people's ability to live. Healthcare costs for everybody, even those who do have homes and jobs, are affected by people who don't have those things. Because everyone has health. Every fucking person, whether they're a citizen, whether they're homeless, whether they're a kid, whether they're an old person, whether whatever the fuck, they all have health. Where they all need housing. They all need clean fucking water, Flint, Michigan. They all have these fucking things. So if you took all of the wealth we're using to send bombs to fucking genocide Palestinians, if we spent some of the money we used across the world to destroy the fucking planet and used that money to acknowledge the fact that humanity needs food, water, and shelter, and made that shit fit into this fucked up capitalistic hellscape system that we have and insist on keeping, and made it beneficial to the people who insist on holding the power and the fucking supplies and all of that shit, if you made it benefit those fucking selfish motherfuckers that insist on hoarding all of the supplies that they have, if you made it beneficial to them, then they would actually be able to benefit the fucking society. But the problem is they don't benefit from a well fed and well-oiled society, they benefit from people who are fucking scared, fucking starving, and have no other choice. And have no other choice, because those are well-motivated consumers. Three things. Three things. One, coming from uh, my whole psychology degree thing. Mm-hmm. Um, caveat. Yeah. <laughs> caveat. You can't completely fix homeless by just giving people homes. There's a lot of the mental illness and taxation that comes from being homeless that then needs to be taken care of. Of course, that's an addition. Yeah, you can you can give a homeless person a home and they will get rampant anxiety. 
that they then have to deal with. Yeah, um, another thing you can do. But it, but it is a huge... It yeah. would be a huge help, you know, obviously. Um, second, did you see all the abandoned schools and everything in Flint that had tons of bottled water in them? Oh, no, I did Yeah, there was just abandoned... People came in to abandoned, uh, to abandoned buildings and found up to the ceiling stockpiles of bottled water that Flint never received, and it was there the whole time. Oh my god. Yeah, it was horrendous. Um... And three, oh goodness, what was going to be my third one? I've been going a while, so I don't know. Mm, okay. This is why I need to write stuff down. Um, While you think about it, I'm going to read comments from Despa. Uh, Despa said, revolting against taxes, then adding your own taxes that way, uh, that are way higher. It's, it just works. Makes absolute sense now. <laughs> And Despa also said, yeah, UK is getting uh, shiz for not letting in war refugees when the government is trying to get war vets and homeless more housing. Instead, they're putting them all in government-owned hotels. Definitely not glamorous accommodation, but it's not the street. I think they, that both refugees and war vets should be taken care of. They're all people. They all need help. Well, if you do, uh, feel free to, to say something. Uh, uh, uh. But uh, we've been on <laughs> we've been on this for a bit. Yep, sorry. Oh no, you're good. Sometimes you just gotta let some fucking social indignation out. Uh, oh, I remember what it oh was. what was it? What was it? Um, there was a uh, good old good old Twitter. Oh God. Good old Twitter. Uh, a person tweeted, and they were like. Isn't it insane that people see getting, like, letting a house rot empty, not making a profit, is still more valuable than selling that house to, like, a small family? You know, th about the hoarding of property. Yeah. With, uh, realtors or whatever. And then a, a landlord or somebody was like, fuck you, it's my property. Like, if it doesn't make a profit, I'll sooner turn it into a parking lot. And there was a person who commented, be like, imagine you're the exact person this post is about. <laughs> and exactly what you said, like, made their point. Like, wh <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> why would you, if you don't, if the house isn't profitable for you, fucking sell it. Why would you demolish it? <laughs> this Seriously. doesn't make any sense. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you have the right to be an asshole. That doesn't mean you should, nor should you be proud of being an asshole. houses like I want to and I can own a hotel and I can do all this fun cool shit where we have a bunch of money now I do worry like our kids I think they would understand oh yeah mom did this specifically to help people we're doing it to help not really for profit but then how many generations after that do our great 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 grandkids become basically the same type of attitude we're like this is mine I don't give a shit if Houses, you know. Well, I think that ties into the whole you can't control what people think or do. You can't. And it's like But I don't wanna like be like when I die selling all I don't want my kids to maybe be bad people. But no. you know You do the best you can for the people that you wanna help. Try to set a good example for the people that you feel like will listen. And that's all you can do. Remembered or immortalized or anything, I just want my life to have a positive, good impact that isn't reversed by one of my descendants. Well, you you impact way more people in your life than you ever will know. That's true. So one person will not be able to undo your life. Right. So like. You, you've already made a positive impact in your life, all as it is. So, I don't even think so. No, I, I, I think you have. And 
So just keep going, because you're not going to be undone. Uh, we got a response from Despa that says, Yeah, I do, uh, but UK doesn't ha uh, really doesn't have the space anymore. There's whole families in these single hotel rooms. We don't have land mass anymore without all houses being 10 stories. Yeah, that's true. So, let me get this straight. The UK, the entire United Kingdom, has been cemented over. Essentially, yeah. You'd be very surprised. I'd have to be, because I could have sworn the last time I saw a video of the United Kingdom, I saw grass somewhere. Yeah, fake news, apparently. My point is... I know the United Kingdom is a lot fucking smaller than America. Way fucking smaller. America is ridiculously bigger than a lot of people would have expected. However, there does tend to be an overestimation of people's idea of uh, uh, crowding. When you see... Uh, what is current accommodation being uh, overused. There are a lot of examples, even in America, of, say, at the border, another fucking popular issue uh, to be mad about, where you see detention centers, just fucking call them what they fucking are, prisons. Prisons for people just trying to fucking live. Um, but they're over-fucking-crowded. Crowded to all hell. You got people sleeping stacked like core cardboard, I don't know, like like wood on the floor with barely anything. Children separated from the it's 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 a horror show sometimes. It makes me think of slave ships. It just makes you think of slave ships. It's a it's a horrifying image, yes. However, uh if these things had proper funding you could expand that stuff. You have more space to use. There's nothing in Nevada except New Vegas and Reno. <laughs> Obviously, there's more stuff there. I am joking. But yes, there's, there's more stuff, more space that could be used. It's just that when we talk about funding for the border, people only talk about the wall or getting more guns and... and, and border security we don't talk about actually taking care of the people we get and also hoarding land is a global problem you gotta imagine for all the people that would have to live stacked on top of each other in the uk there's some dipshit with like 120 acres worth of land with one house on it oh, yeah. <laughs> there's people who hoard money and people who hoard land and despa says here there's some farmland for economic trade that's that's a highfalutin way to say there's farms <laughs> for economic trade. Love you, Despa, but that that was some unnecessary word use. Well, like world economic trade. I know what economic trade is. <laughs> economic trade, buying and selling. I know what that means. I'm just commenting on the fact that it's a clunky way to phrase it, uh, and that's coming from me. But what I'm saying is, is yes. It, it, I'm trying to come off, bring that point into what you're saying, if I may finish my phrase, um, is that um, if land were better utilized and if people were less convinced that there is no land to fucking use because of the impression that there is so much overcrowding, when there is probably some actual land that could be repurposed, then we could definitely accommodate more people. Even in places that seem crowded. I mean, I think that overcrowding, especially in the UK, is a genuine serious issue, but I, I get your point and I get where you're coming from, but also, like, we don't live there. So we, we don't have an idea of how bad it really is. Yeah, we don't live there. We can't know 100% for sure. And I'm not saying what it is. Right. I'm saying that there are similar issues um, 
<laughs> Look at Lafcadio Young trying to get us off the topic with a would you rather question that we will get to in just a second. What I'm saying is where there are dilapidated buildings, where there is property hoarding, where there is um, banks that own a bunch of fucking properties that aren't being used, yeah. where there is land that isn't cultivated, where there is just government buildings being used to rot, where there are unnecessary corporate offices for bu pro uh, businesses that could be remote, where there are places that could be used better, there is not an overcrowding problem, there is a problem with proper allocation. And yeah. as long as there are people who have voting power and influence that believe that we are too overcrowded, we will never solve the actual issue, which is proper allocation of our resources. So we need to change the conversation from we don't have space to how do we use our space? Right. Why don't we do have space. You know what I'm saying? They need to, if they're saying we don't have space, you need to ask yourself why. Well, why is it? I know. I'm, I'm, and I'm saying we need to change how we're phrasing things. And why don't we have space makes it sound like we don't have space. But we do. I get you. Yeah. So, for the second time, I'm going to try to get us out of these serious conversations. And go to the would you rather question that was posed by Lafcadio Young, who's, who asks, would you rather party at a strip club or a gay bar? Okay, now this reminds me of LGBTQ rights and the... <laughs> Ouch! Ow! Oh, please! <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the thing about that question. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. A gay bar can be a strip club, and a strip club can be a gay bar. It sure can. I guess because it's being distinguished in here, the difference has to be whether or not one is... Ooh, okay. We got a vote from Despa that says gay bar, chance of free drinks. I don't, I've never had that happen to me before, but maybe that's just because I'm, <gasps> I'm ugly. Uh, me personally, I'm thinking strip club because there's a performance aspect to it. Yeah. And I think that would be very fun. Yeah, it breaks up the monotony of having to sit there and just sort of talk and consume. Yeah, just like how I love drag shows. Yeah. Because um, going to a gay bar, that's just a bar. Right. but with different clientele. Um, and uh, we don't drink much, if ever. Like, when, like, we drink maybe twice a year and not even on specific days. And it'd be real loud. I mean, both of them are going to be but, loud. They're both loud, but like, one of them's loud with music and one of them's loud with fuckers drunk, drunk talking. Um, I, uh, I went to pick up a DoorDash order mm -hmm. and a dude was in his stool just taking up the whole fucking thing and I had to move past him to get the order. So I was like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And he was just like, he was very easily buzzed. So I was like, okay. So I just had to like literally move his stool a little bit and then touch and then get the get the food. And he was like, did you just touch my ass? And I'm like, no, I'm married. Jesus. <laughs> was such, a, such a spoil sport. I was so angry. What a jackass. I'm like, I'm just trying to get my... <laughs> And he was having a great time, so I, maybe in hindsight, maybe I shouldn't have been such an asshole. You weren't an asshole. <laughs> but I was like, dude. <laughs> uh, question from Samuel Fisher: Incognito or opened? I don't know what that means. Like a secret gay bar or open gay bar? I don't know what that means. Uh, like, clarify what you mean, Samuel Fisher, and we get back to you. Uh, input from Despa, I have definitely not gone to gay bars because I can't, couldn't afford to drink socially with friends. <laughs> That's fair. That's fucking fair. Yeah. All right. Um, browser. Incognito browser or open browser. I've just stopped using incognito mode. Really? 
it just it, one I saw I don't remember what it was but I saw something that was like incognito mode just doesn't do anything um and it still reports your fucking data um I find that incognito mode helps for some things like job searches because you'll you'll job search for like a specific thing and then suddenly all of your new searches are tailored to that yeah or you're like no dude I want to learn how to make cabinets and so like mm. <laughs> Yeah, true. It, it, you know, sometimes your search history can get so refined <coughs> that in order for you to see the grand picture of things, you have to go incognito, and incognito is good for stuff like um, buying plane tickets and researching that shit. Yeah, true. Uh, but for me personally, I prefer open for like everything else. Yeah, almost everything I do requires me being logged in. Yeah. And I'm not fucking logging in manually every single time. Right. I know I should, and I definitely shouldn't say that I'm easily fucking hacked online, but I, I'm not easily hacked. I have different passwords for fucking everything. But um, the point is, is that uh, for incognito, I, for plane tickets, like the two times I've ever fucking flown, right. I did do the incognito thing because I don't want them to change prices on me every time you look back but the job search thing that is definitely a good point um how much longer for the stream right now if nobody else donated and if i was able to stay on the whole time i'd be on for uh eight hours 42 minutes and 28 seconds but if you want to extend that time <laughs> It's $5 per 15 minute increment to increase the time. So just let us uh, let us know with PayPal, Cash App, Coffee, YouTube, uh, Super Chats, Twitch subs, YouTube memberships, all of that shit. I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> Venmo. I don't have Venmo. You have Venmo. I don't have Venmo. But all those are uh, available and in the description. Um, Throne and uh, Amazon Wishlist are also in the description, but that doesn't count towards this because those get you, uh, those go towards specific things, I guess. Um, I'm glad I don't have to worry about my history being on auto delete anymore. Or I, I never set up auto delete, but I used to worry about, oh, I gotta delete my history. I don't want anyone to see. I don't give a fuck about that anymore because I don't even, the only person I share my computer with is you. Yeah. And, I don't got anything on there that... One, I know that you don't go snooping through my stuff, but two, even if you did, there's nothing in there that I don't give a fuck if you see. Right. All the porn I watch, like, you already know about it. Yeah. So it's like, whatever. Uh, going back, one last thing on the touching on the incognito versus open. Uh-huh. I did have a small experiment that made me laugh a little bit. I went on, like... I think it was Hulu or something. I, was, I went on a streaming service with ads. Uh-huh. Uh, and I watched it regular. And of course, there was like, oh, here's your depression medication. Do you like babies? You know, all the, uh, the female-centered ones. And then when I put it on incognito mode, I didn't quite get male-focused ads either. I just got a lot of trucks. <laughs> I just got a lot of cars. And it was always like family it was like oh the subaru will protect your family from nuclear annihilation <laughs> like, <laughs> and i was like i love how the the blending of marketing is cars <laughs> oh yeah because everyone needs one <laughs> right they're like we don't know anything about you but you probably need four wheels and an engine and i'm like yeah. amazing <laughs> yeah fucking the biggest companies in the world can't agree on us needing food water and shelter but fuck if they know we need honda days oh and red robin and it red was, robin and red yum robin. it was so fun red goddamn robin <laughs> oh fuck man i just happen to love talking to I love talking to you too, man. <sighs> well, it feels weird going back to the game now. Right, you have to completely reimmerse yourself. Uh, I love the art style of this game, by the way. I know, it's very cute. Which one are you? Uh, um, uh, this one right here. That's 
That's what I figured. They're not. It's not a weasel. You didn't need binoculars to see the shape of the town from up here, how the land moved and shallowed down toward the buildings. You looked along the cliff in the opposite direction to where you'd gone yesterday. Hey Joseph, I think if we ride our horses this way, we could maybe get to the town from the back. The sheriff's office is at the back of the town there. If we surrender ourselves, we might get to talk to Sheriff. Joseph got up from where he was and walked over to you, looking along the cliff where you were pointing, sipping his coffee. And um, yeah, that could work. What, not a fan of the idea? Oh no, we can do that. This coffee is just mighty vile. <laughs> he held the cup over the edge and tipped it upside down, the brown sludge falling into the sand below. Oh, I gotta stretch my leg. I gotta stretch my leg. Well, no, then I'd be stepping on it and ripping it out of your hand. That's why I didn't want to do it that way. Stinky. Stinky. Yes, stinky. Stinky. You're 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 stinky. you are Sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the sad part is that's also on the top. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> Ow! Fucking don't drink my ass! <laughs> As you get going, we don't have much time before both of us be needing to head back to our gangs. Yeah, of course. Whew. You took one last long. Well, you took one last look at along the cliff face, and started helping Joseph clear up the camp, making haste to get on your horses. Dun 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 dun. dun. You rode as quick as you could down the cliff face, taking a long route around the back of the town. Climbing off your horses, you tied them up out of sight behind the rocky outcropping. Started your cautious walk back to the edge of the town together, cautious about being spotted. Sheriff's office was right in front of you, the squat building backing up onto the side of the desert. Two square windows were cut into the face of the building, holes with holes in the frame from where the bar, where bars once were. As you got closer, you listened out for anything that might tell you where. To, oh my God! Why? 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 For that reaction. <sighs> <laughs> she, she's just so thirsty for attention. Okay, so when she gets out of the bathroom, she washes her hands, thank God, and then she, like, doesn't dry her hands properly. She insists that she does dry her hands but she her hands always come out wet and I always tell her she got, has to finish drying her hands and just now she came out of the bathroom and just slid her wet hands up at, up my fucking bare foot and not even like sensually or slowly just like smearing it and it's just Uncomfortable. It's not pleasant at all. God damn. 
The rhythmic tapping of wood carried on the wind to you from the front porch. Carefully, you and Joseph sidled up to the building. Sticking close to the side, you shuffled along the wall, stone wall, cold in the shade. At the edge, you slowly peeked your head out, squinting through the morning sun. Squinting in the morning sun. I don't want to get shot in the sun. <laughs> Sheriff was sitting on the porch outside, looking out into the town. Kane tapping idly on the wooden boards. He hadn't been noticed yet. Oh, there she go. Begging for attention with a happy dance. Begging for attention with a happy dance. Dancing all around in a happy dance. <laughs> really shouldn't put your phone right next to your, your diary like that. It's got a magnet on it. You shouldn't put your, your fucking diary next to any electron stop <laughs> that was a serious concern man that's why I don't want you putting it on my computer magnets are bad for electronics it's not If you gotta say you think, then you shouldn't declaratively say that someone's wrong. Either way, I was concerned, and then you. the size of that magnet in your uh, diary there. Small. Uh, it's a pretty small magnet. Yeah. Okay. But I am sorry for not taking your uh, concern seriously instead. Laughing in my face. Yeah, being an asshole about yeah. it. Yeah. Pulled your head back and nodded to Joseph, him nodding back in, in turn. <laughs> Jesus! You both drew your guns back to the wall and called out. <clears throat> Here's a good way to, to, to prove to him that you're uh, intending no harm and are trying to turn yourself in. Unless you're going to immediately drop your guns. <coughs> what are you burning? Eggs. Oh, good. You got the fan on? No. Good chance. Yeah. Both drew your guns back to the wall and called out. Sheriff? You hear the panic shuffling of someone getting out of their chair and the cocking of a gun. Who goes there? It's us, Sheriff. Joseph and Calvin. I mean you no harm. Don't judge that by our guns that we're currently holding. <laughs> As you heard Sheriff's footsteps coming towards you round the corner, you both put your hands up, guns hanging limply by the fingertips. Oh, there he is, with his gun. And we got damn guns. What am I looking at here? Why are you back? You surrendering? Yeah, kinda. Sheriff, we need to talk for real this time. Oh, uh, yeah? And I'm supposed to believe any collar wobble you say now, am I? No, we. We know we betrayed your trust. We lied to you about why we're here. We didn't lie about the danger to the town. We're asking you for a chance to explain ourselves. Sheriff's brow was furrowed. You can see that even under the, the tough and scaled skin. A few moments of silence passed between you. Sheriff holstered the gun slowly and calmly, the click of it uncocking, letting you breathe freely again. 
come into the office then, if we have things to discuss. He gave each other a look of relief as Sheriff turned to walk back. He put your guns away as well and followed the lizard round. That's very nice of Sheriff. He even trusted you. He didn't even take your guns away. Don't take your guns to town, son. Leave them gun to home, Bill. Don't take your guns to town. The office was darker inside than yesterday. The morning sun not quite shining in the same way. Sheriff stood with both hands on, on the cane, face curious and ow! 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 Ow, I just, I just rubbed against my foot in a bad way. Sorry. Sheriff stood with both hands on his cane, face curious and stern, still untrusting. So, boys, what do we need to talk about? He looked at Joseph, and he met your eyes. They were darting about in, a, in the small way they do, even when you're focusing on a point. Give you a little wink. That was all he needed. Yesterday, when we told you about those outlaws heading here, that wasn't a lie. I guess it was a white lie. Our, our gangs know about this place. And they're going to be coming here, gold or not. I need a drink. Hold on. <clears throat> oh, fuck. Always difficult trying to stream <clears throat> visual novels. <clears throat> but I try. I try. So you were scouting our town out. Makes sense. Still, I don't see what's stopping you from lying about this town. You both know we can't do much to defend ourselves from a whole gang. So frankly, if I'm picking up what you're putting down, and you don't want to hurt us, then just lie to them. Tell them we're armed to the teeth, scare them off. They won't be stupid enough to still try. I... I guess we could, but... But what? Look, I appreciate you trying to come clean and help somehow, but this ain't our business, you see? It's not one... Oh, sorry. It's not one gang. It's two. I'm from the Curly Wolf Gang. And I'm from the Black Vultures. You're from two different gangs? <laughs> well, I'll be damned. You seem so friendly with each other. Well, the thing is, Sheriff, we... We don't want to work for him anymore. Curly Wolf and Black Vulture, we, we want to kill him. We need each other's help to do that. We can't do it alone, you see. <clears throat> your heart was beating fast in your chest. Saying that out loud, saying that the Sheriff changed things. Before you could convince yourself otherwise, you took Joseph's hand in yours, squeezing it tight as you stood next to him. Yeah. Besides, there's no guarantee we'd be able to convince him to not come here, even if we did lie to him. We need your help too, Sheriff. Sheriff's face remained stern, or maybe concerned, you thought, eyebrows flat across the eyes, thinking... You boys are sure about this? This is what you have to do? Yes. Yeah. Joseph's hand moved, ensuring the grip of his fingers interlocked with yours. <sighs> Get a little old for things like this, but all right. I can't in good conscience endanger the people in this town, but I think I might be able to help. Woo! <laughs> the cord went in between my toes and was tickly. <laughs> that wasn't part of the game. That was just that was that was just me. Sheriff got up and started pacing. <clears throat> so your two gangs. They're both gonna come here? Yeah. I know Curly Wolf will for sure. Black Vulture is bored, I can tell. He's itching to do something. Any history between them? Any scuffles? Would they fight or make a truce if they met? Black Vulture has said before he 
fight Curly Wolf, but I don't know if Curly even knows he exists. Curly Wolf wouldn't work with another gang unless he had to. I don't think he'd give up this place so easily. Seems to me like them meeting up would be beneficial to your goals, don't you agree? A fight between them would be chaotic, but maybe that's what we need. Something might even finish him off. Someone might even finish him off for us. It might, it'd be dangerous for us, though, too. Well, now, hold on. When do the lookouts... When do the lookouts get caught in the shuffle? Almost never unless we start it. If anything, we should be the safest ones of the bunch. You're right, you're right. If you can delay their arrivals, then I might have a solution for you. Clemency gets supplies monthly. They arrive by train about a day and a half's ride from here. That's where the nearest station is. Since it's a whole town supplies and the trip is long, everyone in Clemency goes in a wagon together. The easiest and safest for all of us. As luck would have it, that's in three days. So the town will be completely empty? Not a soul. I can guarantee it. We ride early in the morning and ain't back till the next day. You get your gangs here on that day and do what you need to do. Best I can come up with you on short notice. That could work. Not like we have any other plan. Not anything, and anything could happen. That's better than nothing. Things were happening so fast. Sheriff really wanted to help. This was incredible. Was this really happening? Was this something you could do? Three days, right? We need to both be here in three days? Yep. Do you think you can do that? I think we can. Joseph looked at you, both of you holding each other's hand tighter. We have to. Good, good. And thank you for trusting me with this. You took a real gamble coming back here. No, thank you, Sheriff. Oh, he took off his hat! So cute. Yeah. <laughs> Respectful, stinky boy. Respectful, stinky boy. <laughs> no, thank you, Sheriff. Really and truly. I hope to see you again when this is over. God willing, you'll make good on that promise. For sure. For sure. For, for sure. For sure. I think we both need to get going now. We'll be expected back today. Yeah, we need to start riding soon. Godspeed then, both of you. Keep yourself safe. You felt sick to your stomach and light on your feet. You nodded at Sheriff and left, still holding Joseph's hand. Back with your horses, you made one last minute check of your, checks of your bags, ensuring everything was secure for the long trip back. Three days from now. Three days from now. You'd be back. Both of you. Some part of you dreaded needing to start this journey. Lingering on the feeling of standing here, not moving. So much had changed since you got here. Now, you might be risking it all. Doesn't feel fair. The idea of losing something you've only just found, only just got the chance for. You shoved it down, though. The ride back was long. Didn't need that kind of worry gnawing at your heart. Better for you that every time you saw his face, even a glance as you checked your saddle, it all came rising to the top once more. Like a drowning man pushed under the waves, breaching the surface again as he, he refuses to sink. Food is good from Tynamo and Co. Thank you for the input. <laughs> Appreciate that. I think I'm ready. Me too. Joseph stood by your side now, waiting for you to turn and look at him. He contemplated just getting in the saddle, not lingering for longer than you had to. You felt the light touch of his hand on your shoulder. 
twisting, pressing your face now over his, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, it's your alarm, sorry. Twisting, pressing your face now over his shoulder, arms clinging around his side. You were holding him before you could think. A hug. Oh. <laughs> cute little Super cute. Yeah. Cute. They are cute. Like, take a big whiff. Oh, stop. <laughs> they are cute. Joseph said nothing. He did nothing, too, for a moment until you felt the weight of his arms on your, on your back tightly clinging to you. You don't like chocolate, huh? Well, to each their own, I guess. If you don't. <laughs> oh, you're swapping your headphones, okay. Well, you think you're gonna talk to the stream kid about how I dig like a badger? <laughs> <laughs> Your hand took a great fistful of his clothes between your fingers where they lay. As you held him tighter, he squeezed you even more. You wouldn't care right now if he squeezed you hard enough to break a rib! Well, I... I, I think he would care about that a little bit. Feathers on his neck tickled your face and poked your closed eye. You could feel the way his back bent. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what that means. I'm looking it up. Japanese for arrangement. By now, I hope you practice arrangement. The procedure or the preparation. Efficient planning. What, a bunch of stuff about Pikmin keeps coming up. What the fuck? I don't know what that means. <laughs> what the fuck? Dendori, the practice of organizing without wasting any time. Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh. I am just kind of, kind of ba uh, baffled. Not really baffled, I guess. I'm just sort of confused. It's not what I thought that meant. Okay. Anyway, I guess we'll... Be more efficient. <laughs> Get back to the game. I really don't know what the, what you meant by that, but bye. Um, anyway. I don't know how long the hug lasted, but eventually you let go.
He'd feel imprints on your skin from where the hardness of his clothes, his buttons, his belt had dug into you. Still, you didn't mind. He held you still, facing each other, holding each other's arms, looking at each other. Just as eyes flicked around your face and the top of your head, holding his gaze there for a moment before leaning in. <gasps> you have the gentle prod of his beak on your scalp. The sharp edges tucking at your fur. You preen through a few more times, pulling gently and splitting the loose hairs to the side. Done. He pulled back, his face a little sheepish. There. Yeah, that's better. Need to look your best when you go back. Thought your mama said it was impolite to use your beak. Thought your mama said it was impolite to use your beak. Mm -hmm. Well, she's not here. Besides, I thought you fit uh, the criteria. Thank you. Your cheeks were hot and flushed with what felt like all the blood in your body. You were sure you could see the same under his feathers. I'll see you in three days, you hear? Yeah. We'll kill those bastards. Yeah. So romantic. You nodded. His hands trailed your arms as he walked away on his horse. Walked away to his horse, not on his horse. Jesus. You got up in your saddle too, the reins familiar in your hand. Whoa! He went all the way around the world. <laughs> Came back. Joseph trotted his horse round up alongside you, facing the opposite way. Well, partner, time to go. Wait, Joseph, just promise me if something goes wrong, you'll run. Promise? Killing them isn't worth it if you die, too. If you run, I'll run. They ain't worth the effort of dying. You smiled at it with the same type of smile as when you left home. Weak and worn, but relieved all the same. Goodbye, Calvin. See you soon, Joseph. You both started your horses moving, gently trotting until you were no longer beside each other. You heard Joseph give a <laughs> and his, I'd have done that more convincingly, but I can never tell when the boys are off work. And his horse set off at speed, kicking up dust into the air and when you when you look behind you. Oh, there's the town. You set your own horse into a gallop, the rush of the wind in your ears, you rode through and rode through and out of clemency. Okay. Back to your gang. Back to the man you were plotting to kill. Dun 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 horse in the background. Tied to a stump. The midday sun hung harsh and bright in the sky as you made it back to the camp. You and your horse both tied, tired from the ride. The current hideout of Curly Wolf and Co. was a ramshackle affair nestled in the depths of rolling hills, hidden from the sight of any passerby. Riding slowly in, you climbed off your horse onto the sun-baked ground and led it over, tie, led it over to tie it up with the others. The smell of food wafted, but you could see people cleaning it up already. You'd missed lunch. As you made to leave the horse, a sudden thought struck you, and you doubled back to scramble about in your bag. What was it? You hadn't left it behind, surely. The trickle of panic that had started to leak in your chest thankfully stopped as your fingers felt the soft brush of what you were looking for. You pulled out the feather Joseph gave you out of your bag, holding it closely to yourself. <sighs> Had a short gasp of a sigh. Oi, town boy! Ears perked up and you stood straight up at the sound of Curly Wolf shouting at you. You hastily tucked the feather away in your pocket. Oh, well, there's Curly Wolf. Doesn't look that curly to me, but okay. You turned and made your way over to Curly, eyes down at the ground, avoiding the looks of the others. 
You know how things work around here, don't you, tomboy? Yes. Crowd, a handful of your poncho pulling you forward, stumbling before roughly shoving you off your feet and onto your back. You learned how to take a fall by now. You didn't scramble, you just let yourself lay on the dirt for a moment, waiting. Get up. You pressed your hand to the ground and got up. Not too fast and not too slow. The others still got a laugh out of this routine, but you were too bored of it to be embarrassed anymore. If you know how things work, then I shouldn't have to punish you for not doing what you're told. When you come back, you come straight to me with what you found. You don't stand around playing with your little horsey. Yes, boss. Right. Come on in. Spit it out. I found the town. A place called Clemency. got some gold from mines, but no bank or anything like that. What'd you say now? If Curly knew Sheriff was the only person there who even resembles a law man, he'd just go barging right in. This lie was crucial. He couldn't catch you out. The place looked armed at the teeth, even so. All the townsfolk had some way of defending themselves. No gun laws like other places. Well, shit. I was hoping it'd be a breeze. We need an easy win right now. We, I, we, I, I found out from the sh sh from sh sh the fuck. <laughs> I'm trying to sound all nervous and I'm fucking up. We, I, found out from sh the uh the sheriff that <laughs> the place is gonna be empty soon. We were focused on a hill in the distance, not daring to look directly at him. Still the edge of your vision, you could see that Curly's eyes narrowed, staring at your face, studying it. How come? Overheard that they retrieve supplies for the town every so often, and the next caravan drive is in three days. Well then surely they would wait until the caravan comes back. They'd come in four days when the town is fully stocked. <laughs> Whole town's gonna be going. It'll be empty and unguarded. The suspicion in Curly's eyes melted into smugness, and a grin split his face from ear to ear. Hot damn! Now that is an easy win. He turned his face away from you, shouting into the air of the camp. Boys, three days from now we're gonna be rich! Love you. He walked away around the camp, kept talking, hyping it up, riling everyone up for what was to come. He didn't need to listen anymore. Your job was done for now. He went back to being invisible, staying out of the way, the usual. And there's the fire from the beginning. That night, the hills were full of the sound of howling, cheering, drunken songs as the Curly Wolf Gang prematurely celebrated their victory. This was a bigger deal than you had maybe anticipated. In any case, your goal was the same. And they didn't know what was coming. Curly Wolf... D Curly Wolf didn't know what was coming. He was the cockiest you'd ever seen him. The days after were a blur. If you weren't needed to help with some menial work somewhere in camp, you were just sleeping in your tent. Trying to avoid the blazing heat, keeping out of everyone's way like you always did. Waiting, just like everyone else, for the day you'd ride out.
On the night before you were due to leave, you snuck out of your tent, out to where no one would see you. Away from the camp. The sounds of it echoing lightly through the air, you clambered halfway down a hill and sat. You didn't do this often. You know when someone might come to your tent needing to drag you away for something. Couldn't risk it often being unfindable. But you thought it important enough to do tonight. You come here. You got to come out here and breathe in the cool night air, stare into the sky across the horizon at the blanket of stars in the sky, trying to pinpoint constellations you were told about when you were much younger. You wondered if Joseph knew any. He didn't think about it at the time. The feather was in your pocket still. The safest place you could think to keep it. At night, when the lights were out and the tent was filled with the sound of someone snoring, you'd hold it in your hand, flicking through it with the claw of your thumb, feeling the smoothness against your fingers just for a bit before you put it back. It helped you get to sleep. Again, now, while you were alone and sitting under the stars, you pulled it out of your pocket. Fiddling it, fiddling with it in your hand, feeling it tickle the pads of your palm. Your mind wanted to wander, to think about important things, think about all the ways tomorrow could go wrong, to think about what might happen to you both. You didn't let it. The feather helped too, for once. You just let yourself be calm. You'll see him tomorrow. Until then, worrying would do you no good. You imagine that was the kind of thing he'd say to you if he were here, sitting next to you. You imagine the weight of his head on your shoulder, the thought of his warmth sidled up next to you. All the things you wouldn't feel again if you lost him. You'll see him tomorrow. It's the morning. You're awake early. You didn't sleep much anyway, as much as you tried to. The sun was as bright as always, coming through the yellowed fabric of the tent. You laid awake, waiting for the others to get up. Waiting for Curly Wolf. Start rallying guys together for the ride to Clemency soon enough. You need to make sure you were there. The minutes ticked by, and you heard more people getting up. The camp coming to life once more with the sounds of work and talk. You got up and got yourselves ready, sitting on your bedroll after, bedroll after, and waiting more. Then, the voice of Curly Wolf. All right, boys, gather round. We're heading to the town of Clemency this morning. I need ten or so men with me to haul valuables. It's about a half a day's ride from here. Who's coming to get our gold? You heard all of this as you were leaving your tent and making your way to the small crowd of canines. Look at them. I like how even one of us did a tiny little hat. And then there's us in the background. Instantly, there were more people joining, eager to prove themselves, to get their hands on real gold. One, two, three already. You suddenly push your way through the crowd, trying to reach the front. Pushed out the edge of the crowd by the huddling bodies, you found yourself standing in front of Curly. He stared at you, even as he clapped the hands and shoulders of other guys walking past, joining the excitable group. What are you standing here for, tomboy? We don't need any little pups to help shift the goods. You needed to be on this crew. You couldn't talk back to him, though. You didn't know what to say. What could you say? Just kept standing there. <laughs> you think you're gonna be any... You You think you're gonna be of any help with this scrawny stick? You grabbed your arm, raising it up and down, shaking it by the wrist. Every inch of you was screaming to snatch your arm back from his hand, but you knew what would happen if you did. He threw your arm back at you, making you stumble a little. Go make yourself useful someplace else. I only need real men for this trip. You had to say something. You had to. You had to, you had to be there. I... 
you'll need a lookout. I was looking at the assembled group doing a quick head count. All right, boys, that's ten. Be ready to move out in five minutes. I didn't seem to hear you. Your words were quiet, whispered. Try it again. You'll need a lookout, Curly. His ears twitched. He still didn't turn to face you. I heard you the first time. Stop yapping at me about bullshit. We don't know when the townsfolk will be back. It would be bad if they come back while you're there, and even worse if there's no one keeping an eye out. You'll all, you'll all, be, you'll all have your hands full already. You heard him sigh, and a little growl rose in his throat before it subsided into nothing. Fine then, Tom boy. If you're that eager to come, I suppose I'll have to let you. You're riding in the wagon. You don't need a horse. No, you didn't get that privilege when other people needed them, you supposed. The wagon was fine by you. You know, it was a punishment of kinds that you'd be riding in it and on the way back too, along with everything else. Boxes and sacks and supplies and whatnot, all bumping about, hoping none of them ever fall over and hit you. Cramped space with nowhere to sit or lie, just standing for hours, waiting for it to stop. Get a move on. Get a move on. You followed after Curly to get ready. Of course, what Curly didn't know was that you weren't going to be coming back here. Neither of you were. <laughs> hey, Google Krishna, sup again, sup again. From where you sat, slumped in the corner of the wagon, the wind whistled through the gaps in the canvas next to your head. I thought you were going to be standing the whole time. What the fuck? The edges flap, the wind ruffling your clothes and your fur, drying up your nose as you sit with your knees up. The wagon rocks and bums as it's dragged by horse through the desert. And this corner is the only place you feel safe enough to stay. You can at least keep yourself steady even as it tried to knock you about, clinging onto the wood frame. Looking toward the entrance of the wagon, where the covering split down the middle, you couldn't see much. Or rather, what you could see were, the great, were great clouds of dust billowing out from the wheels into the dry air. As uncomfortable as the wagon was, at least it provided you shelter from the sun, unlike riding on horseback. The winds coursing past your ears were welcome too, cooling your head that was swimming with thoughts. You knew you were close to clemency now. The entourage had been traveling long enough. As you got closer and closer, the minutes stretched on. You felt sick to your stomach. Less, less so butterflies, more like hornets. This was going to be it. This was what you'd been waiting for, not just for days, but years, really. A, a chance like this. All the anxieties and concerns you'd pushed down last night were rushing back up like geysers. What if Joseph wasn't there? What, what if his gang wasn't there? What if you reached clemency and Curly realizes you were lying? What if you couldn't kill them both? Or, or they demolished the town and, and Sheriff came back to, to find nothing left? To, to find you broke your promise? What if you were killed quickly or, or, or slowly? You'd seen Curly kill traitors before. The simple fear of dying took hold of your heart. The chill of Reaper's shadow. I should really not be smiling during this. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fucking expression on my VTuber model was set to smile. I was like, eh, you should not be smiling during this. <laughs> Excuse me. No, this wasn't going to be it. This isn't all there was going to be. You'd see him again soon. You do what you had to together. This wasn't going to be it. There would be more after. It was hard for you to imagine, but you knew it to be true. There would be days after today. You wanted to see them. And if you die, at least it was for a reason. You sure as hell weren't going to go out without a fight. 
this was a risk you would always be willing to take. You and Joseph would take it together, and you were going to see it through. You steeled your resolve, locking the furnace of your heart so that no one may put it out. The rumble of the wagon started to slow. The rocking back and forth became gentler and gentler until everything came to a stop with a small lurch. The constant motion that had been in your body was gone all of a sudden. Everything seemed impossibly still. Like when many conversations in a bar all died down suddenly, leaving it quiet in a strange moment. You heard the thud of Curly jumping off his horse and crawled to the floor of the wagon to the front. Curly came and opened the low wooden door, letting you slide out of the wagon and jump out. The light of the late morning was blinding, and you held your arm over your brow to shelter your eyes. As your eyes adjusted, the bright desert became clearer. Hazy rock formations in the desert became familiar. Walking around the wagon, you saw the shapes of buildings that set your teeth on edge. This is the town of Clemency. Here we are, boys. <laughs> what a shithole. No one here, at least. We'll take what we're here for and leave sharpish. Won't we'll know what hit them. Ain't that right, Tom boy? He slapped your heart on the back. It was there was an anticipation in the air amongst yourselves. This was the place they'd been waiting for. You'd been waiting for it too, but the anticipation was not one of eagerness. Even in your brief visit here, many things had happened. In some way, being back in clemency was comforting. Despite that, you couldn't ignore the chill in your veins, the prospect of what will come next. There was no backing out now. But like those few times in the past, when the fuse of a, on a stick of dynamite had been lit, and you were still holding it. It was only going to be a few moments before more until the spark reached the end of the wick. Oh boy. There it is. Curly started walking into the town, and you followed suit with everyone else, staying close behind him. Clemency was dead quiet, not a soul in sight, just like Sheriff said it'd be. I'm gonna save real quick. Oh, Bree is back. Bree is back. Bree is back, and I'm gonna get a drink. Welcome back. Welcome back. Laundry all done? Huh? Laundry all done? Hey. Well, I thought you were calling something. Then what's that? The first load. Of? Laundry. Of how many? Uh, maybe three. He studied the town as you walked down the main street, peering through windows, drawing up plans in his head. Every building you walked past filled you with a little more fear. You are still waiting for something to happen. For anyone else to appear, soon enough, Curly would want to get started for real and ask you where the gold was supposed to be. Then, at the end of the street, you saw what you were waiting for. Who you were waiting for. A hazy, clumped group of guys making their way onto the main street from the other side of town. As they got closer, it became clearer. <laughs> hey, there we are. Or they are. And, uh, I don't see Joseph among them. Uh oh. The figure of a tall, slender bird with many others in a tow, in, in tow, straggling behind him, much like you behind Curly. Curly stopped as he spotted the group too, staring him down. Oh, ho, ho. where's the tumbleweed? Got 
got some battle music. Now, who the hell is that in my town? He started walking again with purpose and menace as they quicken their pace and turn towards you. you. Felt your heart beating in your chest now, reaching up to your throat, blood rushing, adrenaline starting to build in you. They're really here. And you could see Carly wasn't happy about it. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. Bree's clearing out the, the laundry basket. Trying to separate them between my box and her box. We keep our... Since we're sleeping on the floor of my brother and his... Uh, and my brother and Jesse's apartment. Uh, we just... We don't have a dresser right now. We just have two boxes on the floor. And so she's just chucking our clothes from across the room into two different boxes. And so I'm like trying to read, but then I just see different fucking clothes flying across the room. <laughs> the thing is like, I think maybe 75% of them have been like in the box they're supposed to go in. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Thank you. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Both sides slowed as they came closer to each other, coming to a stop halfway down the street, a few dozen paces between them. Not too close, not too far. He saw Black Vulture much more clearly now, even though he's obviously more of a buzzard, I don't know. He was looking with intrigue at Curly. You looked past him, though, desperately searching the small crowd of people following in his wake until you saw the one you'd been waiting for. Joseph, stony-faced and stern, blending in with his compatriots. Oh, better eye than I, because I, I couldn't see him in the, in the group. I'd go back and look, but the scroll back option is not there. It's not there. Man, that burning smell. That burning smell is a lot worse now. I'm gonna I'm gonna be saying something to Bree in a second. Hold on. Just gotta wait for it to stand up. Oh wait, she's already she's gonna go check it. Okay, cause she's she's making hard boiled eggs, but uh the smell of the burner is uh pretty bad when it smells when you're cooking. And uh Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, so when uh, when you're cooking on the burner, it usually smells pretty burnt. And uh, so we usually put the vent on. And that usually clears up the smell. However, that already happened. And now, this was smelling burnt again. I was like, that's not good. Because uh, I'd be willing to bet that the water was boiled out of the, out of the pan. So... Uh, yeah, she went up and checked, and yeah, there was no water in the fucking pan. It happens. It happens. I mean, she's trying to do, like, so many things right now, and and, and it's hard to keep track of all of them. And she's working hard as fuck right now, man. Especially since we don't have laundry in, in the apartment. she got to go to a whole separate fucking building on a different floor. And so it's hard to, to, to maintain all the different juggling acts going on. So... It's rough. It's rough. It was almost funny to compare. It was almost funny to compare to the layback and jovial man you'd gotten to know. After a few moments longer of staring each other down, Black Vulture spoke. Well, well, is that who I think it is? The infamous Curly Wolf. What's it to you? And what are you doing in my town? No question mark, because that wasn't a question, it was a challenge. Well, I imagine we're both here for much the same reason. I heard tales of your exploits. Can't say the same. Who are you? I'm Black Vulture, gentleman outlaw of the Dunring Bell. <laughs> Such a prick. The 
feathers of Black's neck clearly ruffled at Curly's rebuttal, but he waved it off. More fool, ya, I say. You give it a go, then. Yes, and how strange that we might run into each other like this. I'm willing to bet you're not a Sharon man. Like I said, this is Curly Wolf property now. So you best go on and fly away. <coughs> fuck, hold on. Shit. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm already reading something for a long fucking time. Let me just choose a really fucking gruff voice to just destroy myself. That, that's just a great fucking idea. <sighs> How much longer do we got on the timer right now? Oh, we're at 7 hours, 43 minutes, and 17 seconds. If anyone wants to uh, add time to that, uh, our donation bar is right down here. Right down here. Um, $5 or more donated on any of the places. Links in the description. Cash app, PayPal, Twitch subs, uh, YouTube memberships, Super Chats. Um, $5.00. In any denomination, we'll get you 15 minutes in that denomination. Thank you for your consideration. No, I don't think we will be, Curly. I think it'd be a shame for so much gold to be wasted on scum like you. Should keep a highfalutin' beak of yours shut, unless you want a barrel of a gun inside it. <laughs> Let us see then, Curly Wolf. To the victor go the spoils, and I intend to spill that down at Branios across the dirt. Fine by me. No need much a brain to shoot you. This wasn't how you'd wanted things to go. You and Joseph were still in the thick of it, facing each other. You thought you'd be out of the fight. The air was still. Hands came to hover over guns, every pair of eyes trained on the opposite side, waiting. And a standoff like this, it was a test of the boss's mettle, their mental fortitude. How long would anyone last before pulling the trigger? Trying to psych each other out, being the first to take the shot. Wasn't always the best call, but having to react to the first shot it could be worse. Worse. It was a test of loyalty, too, for everyone following them. Your underlings couldn't step out of line to take the shot themselves. Break rank early would be a betrayal, but when bullets start went flying, it was unpredictable. Staying staying meant a risk to yourself. You know, Curly was a good shot. He had the upper hand here, but you were remain but you were reminded something that Joseph told you. Black Vulture wasn't the shoot the shootest. Wasn't the shootest. He had something else someone else for that. He could brag, but he wasn't the real one. You thought about whether Curly should know. Don't tip. Oh, we gotta. No! No, I can't. No! No, I can't go back. Okay, I still have the save. I can still. I can still save here. Okay. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. You fucking prick. Okay. <laughs> Oh, buddy, that was... Ooh. My instinct in this moment is to keep quiet because... Holy shit. Sorry, my microphone was going nuts. Don't say shit. Don't step out of line. Because if you're playing your role, you should know that shit. And also, tipping him off... might be a bad idea in general? I don't know. It just feels like a bad idea to tip him off. But we saved. We did save, right? Yeah, we did. Okay. So what I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to keep quiet. But considering this was our like first fucking choice, it feels like it'd be pretty fucking important. No, oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh... So I'm, I'm going to keep quiet here. No, 
was better if Curly didn't know about the shootist. As dangerous as it was to leave someone like that hanging around during a fight, it was more a danger to him. The seconds dragged on. It felt as though your very breath may tip the scales, chest heavy from breathing in the air of people who wanted to kill you. There was safety in numbers in the crowd. And so you found yourself for the first time thinking about running. Never before had you considered it. This time was different, of course. There wasn't going to be a next time. Running would tip the scales for sure, but you couldn't know who in whose favor. Play it safe with the gang. Or run and let all hell break loose. Holy fuck! This is like deciding multiple fucking factors. Is this deciding the ending we get? Holy shit! Okay, save again. It'd be the ultimate fucking prank if all of these saves get fucking cleared. Oh my god. Play it safe with the gang or run and let all hell break loose. Jesus. Jesus, man. I mean, my instinct right now is like... <sighs> yeah, yeah, I have max pixels. It's, it's heavy decisions out of nowhere. Very true. Very, very true. Um... Here's, here's my thoughts, and whether or not these matter at all. If we stay in the gang, like, in the numbers, we're more hidden, we're less likely to become a, a target. If we run, it's more likely to start the shooting, which is kind of the goal, but we become the target of the shooting because we're the one moving. Because right now, the the person that'd be getting aimed at by the shootist in the group of, of birds is Curly Wolf. He's the one, he's the fucking main guy. He would be the target. But if we are the one who makes the first move, then we're... Then we all of a sudden are the most noticeable person because we're the one moving. God damn, man. I guess we have to default to... I, I don't know what decision to make, and in those decisions, the rule has always been to follow the plot, isn't it? And the most follow the plottiest choice right now is to... is to not play it safe. Uh, feels like a decision played in into their character, too. Feels like this decision played into their character too. They were tired of running. Oh shit. They were tired of running. That is true. That is true. But they also don't want to stay with the gang. Well, Max Pixels, as you seem to be the only chatter actually talking right now, do you have a choice that you feel particularly drawn to? Because I was about to pick the running option. Uh, and see how that played out. You like the idea of being safe in the group. Okay. You know what? I'll, I'll do that. I, I've saved. So we'll we'll do that. See how it goes. 
if you ran, you might make yourself a target. That's exactly what I said. Okay. Better stick with the gang till they scatter. Curly spoke up in a low voice. Cast to those behind him. Watch and learn, boys. He flexed the wrist of his hand, holding it out before clutching his gun to in its holster. Oh, Despa says to think run. Well, where the fuck were you, Despa? We were already gone. We already moved on. He saw Black Vulture react and turned, reaching for his gun. Curly liked to play with his food. Show off. He waited for the moment Black grabbed his gun the same and quickly and expertly pulled it free, pointing it dead straight. He knew he'd always be quicker on the draw. Kabang! The shot rang out. A bang that made your heart jump and you saw Black Vulture double over, clutching his side. Smoke was barely rising from the barrel of Curly's gun when another shot rang out. Yeah, it looks like Curly's got blood on him. Full on ego and admiring his handiwork, he had noticed one small bird ha hanging on the edge of the crowd that had raised his rifle. Curly's face instantly twisted in a full tooth cry of pain. His eye eyes clenched shut, staggering back a step as he clutched at the side of his chest. Fuck! A moment passed before the crowd behind you dispersed, everyone running to take cover as the fight broke out. On the other side, you saw the same. The clump of figures scattering like ashes to either side of the street. You couldn't see where Joseph went, and you couldn't afford to hang around as more shots were fired. Curly was struggling to move, and he turned to see you still standing there, alone. A bullet whizzed by, striking the ground. Gave you a look and slumped over onto you. One arm slung on you over your shoulder. Much of his weight bearing down on you now. You had no choice but to... Fucking no choice? No one was there? Everyone else was just trying to defend themselves. Fucking push him off and fucking... Yeah, I'm out of here, bitch. I'm, I know you'd probably get shot by your own fucking people for that. You ain't out of there yet. You had no choice but help carry him out of the street, knees shaking as you walked as quickly as you could. Your compatriots fired a volley of rounds down the street, providing you enough cover to drag your bleeding boss between two buildings. It was heavy on your neck and wobbling as you walked together, his stride still outpacing you as you tried to keep up and push him along. You kept walking through the long clump of houses that lined the main street, pushing through the other side where it gave way to a hill. At the corner that led out of the shade, he rested against the wall, lighting the road off you as he craned his neck to check if the way was safe. Again, without a word, he re-slumped onto you, and you walked around the corner together. Curly used the house as a support too now, bloodied hand dragging across the walls as he used you to drag him ever forward. Gunshots continued to ring out, bouncing through the alleys and streets next to you. The acrid smell of gunpowder grew stronger, even as your nose was full of the scent of Curly's sweat-laden fur. He stumbled along the back path a little more before Curly's weight on you suddenly became crushing like gravity itself became stronger. The full weight of Curly lay on you for a moment before your knees buckled and he slid off with a grunt. He threw out a hand, trying to catch himself, scraping it on the wall of, the, of a house as he fell, coming to sit on the dirt. He sat with his back flat against the slatted wooden wall, one hand reaching across to grasp his side so hard you could see the tendons. The other hand clutched his gun, finger resting next to the trigger. He breathed slowly and heavily through gritted teeth, staring out over the edge into the rest of the town, across roofs, and into the desert. His ears twitched with a pop of guns around you, seeming to come from every direction. This was the best chance you were going to get, you thought. He was so vulnerable looking. Some part of your mind, though, said you couldn't. You couldn't kill him. Something was well, something will go wrong. He's a hurt and cornered animal right now. Staring real hard at me there, tomboy. Word I'm gonna croak on you? <laughs> Don't. I'm not going anywhere. You could feel the weight on your gun and your holsters just shifted on your feet. The space where your hand needed to be to grab it. Curly fidgeted about like it was impossible for him to get comfortable where he was before giving up and sitting crooked. Well, I'd out here for the time being. The boys will take care of things. 
You're not much good in a fight, but you're better protection than nothing. Some of Black Vulture's lot might come this way, so keep your eyes peeled. Gently unholstered your gun, letting it dangle in your fingers by the handle. Didn't want to stick around. You didn't know how the fight was going. You didn't know if Joseph was all right. You're just wasting time standing here with this blaster bleeding on the ground next to you. Just shoot him. That's all you had to do. Just shoot him and be done with it. You've killed people before. He deserved it more than most. And still, you can't bring yourself to do anything. Ears prick up. You hear the sound of someone running this way, thudding fast against the dirt and look up. You swing your gun up, gun up hastily, ready for whoever's coming your way. You don't see anything for a few moments until a bird comes running out, looking around frantically. It was Joseph. Oh, buddy. Panting, holding a shotgun in both hands as he looks your way and his eyes land on you. I light up like breath the brightest fireworks. Oh, shit, there's one. <gasps> the glint of Curly's gun shone in the corner of your eye as he moved, arms crossing his body, pointing upward. Joseph's eyes... Just his eyes widened, pupils becoming pinpricks, trying to turn tail and run as he saw Curly take aim. It was also quick, and you felt like an eternity as you yourself lifted your gun, aiming directly at Curly's head as it steadied itself. Before doubt and fear could take hold, you squeezed the trigger and saw his hand, his hand explode. The sound of the shot rattled through your head. Joseph staggered and stopped as it went off. Curly snatched his hand away. His gun dropped to the ground with a dull thud, and he buried his hand into himself, crying out and growling. <laughs> he looked bewilderingly, bewilderingly at Joseph, failing to understand what had what had blasted the fingers off his hand before looking to his side at you, looking at the whiffs of smoke from the barrel of your gun. You felt yourself panting heavily, hands shaking. In fact, your whole body shaking with adrenaline. You heard the thump of footsteps again and looked up to see Joseph run over slowly as he neared you and Curly. Oh, here is a moment. Hehehe. <laughs> He just dumped a bunch of eggshells in the trash. It was a satisfying moment. Sorry. This is a great fucking CG. I have several times. Because I like you, dummy. Does your wife I just told her. <laughs> the two mad eyes. To anger and disgust spilling onto Curly's face in equal amounts while Joseph's became pitiful, you thought. So this is him, huh? The great Curly Wolf. Joseph came down from your eye level, crouching to Curly, studying his face. Yeah. All makes a little more sense now. Found yourself a little buddy, did you? He won't stick around. I can see it in his eyes. Shut your trap, Curly. Anger flitted across Curly's brow. But he wasn't stupid. He knew he wasn't getting out of this situation. He was as good as dead. You really are two peas in a pod. Traitors and cowards who just run from everything. Breasts are haggard, throat hoarse and harsh, holding on out of spite more than anything else. Whatever he told you, promised you, tomboy. It's not real. I know people like that when I see it. When things get tough, he'll leave. He'll run. <laughs> like all the other times. Or will you run first? <laughs> You might say that's not so, but I know you're a liar. 
Always have been. Should have known you'd betray me sooner or later. Saw it in your eyes all those times. Never liked you. Do you even know his name? Joseph regarded Curly Cooley. Curly Cooley! But his anger wasn't concealed by the sharp spite in his voice or the clench of his jaw. Does it matter? What's a name, anyhow? If I call someone and they come, that's their name. Answer the question. Do you know his name? Curly squinted up at Joseph, the sun shining in his face. You and Joseph's shadows cast up on the wall beside him. No. Of course I don't. Damn! The deafening blast of Joseph's shotgun cut him short. You flinched away, averting your eyes from the peppered red mess of his chest. In the damn! He followed the momentum of your flinch, turning around, gazing out across the hill and down into the town, breathing in and out. Yeah, let's go, Joseph! Fuck yeah! You heard one last... You heard one last breath of sorts behind you, a gurgle of blood from the mouth, and the rustle of clothes as he fell limp. Wrong answer. Galvin. He gingerly reached a hand behind him, tugging at his shirt when you found purchase, pulling yourself in. Ah, oh, there's the hug again. His arms caught you as you took a weak step towards him, returning his embrace as he held you close, your heads over each other's shoulders. There was a pit in your stomach, making you nauseous. You closed your eyes as you breathed in, focusing on a smell so close to you. Are you right? Are you hurt? I'm fine. I, I'm fine. Pulled away from each other as you heard more gunshots. The fight starting up again. No doubt caused by Joseph's shotgun. We need to get somewhere safe. Wait for this to blow over. Once they realize Curly's dead, the guys will probably hightail it out of here. Where's Black Vulture? Not sure. Uh, lost him when the fight broke out. Uh, I was more concerned about finding you, really. Holstering your gun. You Why would you holster your gun? I know you were only concerned about killing the fucking gang leaders, but come on, man. There are, there are people here that would shoot you on sight. You, you need a little self-preservation here. Anyway, holstering your gun, you stooped down and picked up Curly's revolver from where it had fallen. Oh. So if I had finished reading the fucking sentence, I would have known that... God damn. You grabbed Joseph's hand and placed it on your shoulder and pulled him with you. Walking briskly, keeping on the way you'd been going already. Excuse me. We can skirt around the edge of town and make our way to the saloon. Safest place I can think of. Yeah, outlaws never go to a saloon. Joseph nodded and followed you, trailing by his arm. Your gun held firm and ready in your hand. Cautious of every alley you passed. Oh yeah, laws. That'll stop outlaws. Wait! <laughs> Wait a minute, Spongebob! Are you telling me outlaws don't follow the laws? <laughs> You're silly. You're silly. You notice it. You do take off your shoes. Yeah, it makes sense. She says she doesn't want to eat with hot feet. Kept following the edge of the hill, heading for what heading for where the street bent, sheriff's office being across the way. You're aiming to loop around the back of the office and avoid the firefight in the street, but as it came into view, a tall figure started to pass by. 
He didn't... Ooh. Yeah, there he is. He didn't... Oh, does that mean we're going to kill this one since Joseph killed ours? He didn't notice you at first, but the sound of you both stopping short caught his attention, and you met the eyes of Black Vulture. Well, well. What do we have here? Taking a prisoner, Joseph? You can see the blood straining, staining his coat, his shirt, on the side of his stomach where he pressed a hand, but he seemed, seemed surprisingly unfazed. Following, ba following Black from behind the building, following Black from behind the building came the bird you recognized as the shootest, the one who shot Curly. Stood behind Black, rifle firm in both hands, a mask covering his face, small eyes watching keenly. The grip of Joseph's hand on your shoulder grew tighter as he pulled you toward him a little, continuing to walk you forward slowly. Yeah, thought it might be useful. Should have some knowledge about Curly Wolf's hideouts and whatnot. Black grunted, hunched over, but now standing taller, his crooked neck raising his head above you. Always so quick on your feet, Joseph. It's good thinking. I'm just curious as to why you're not holding them to gunpoint. He took a few steps closer to you both. Oh, indeed, why I had to take a bullet for your actions. My actions? You ran, you slimy, traitorous coward. You ran with your tail between your legs, and now I'm bleeding from the stomach. Palms were sweating, knees weak, arms spaghetti, blood sweater, spaghetti. He head down, faced away from Black and his shootist, hiding the gun in the... Damn it, if we had told Curly Wolf about the shootist, then the shootist wouldn't be here right now. Oh. Uh-oh. Faced away from Black and his shootist, hiding the gun in your hand. It was a bad time to be caught in the act. He thought about whether this was your chance to kill Black, but he was so close to you both that his own gun was drawn still. With his own gun drawn still. And you knew now how hard it would be to kill for Joseph to try to kill him, the fear dripping inside his chest. We shouldn't stick around. Curly's guys might find you. You dared to look behind you, look at where they were standing. But you saw in Black's eyes you'd made a mistake. Glint of a gun in your hand, hidden and now revealed as you twisted your body ever so slightly too much. Joseph must have seen the connection too, the spark of realization in Black's eyes. Ba boom! Joseph, he swung his arms suddenly toward Black, bashing him upside the head with his shotgun and knocking him to the ground with a grunt. The shooter, the shooter, the shooter, the shooter! Oh god, oh god, oh god! The shootist, even while watching closely, was caught off guard. And though he readied his rifle quickly, you had already been looking at him. You aimed the revolver at his head and fired a clean shot clean through. Oh! His mask flew off, twisting in the air. God damn! Uh oh. As the shootist fell, his dying trigger finger squeezed enough to let loose a final shot from his from the tilted rifle. <gasps> no. Okay, his thigh. That that could be bad. There is a very important. There's oh jeez. But if you told about the shootist, wouldn't Curly just quick draw him at the start, leaving him uncontested? That's also a good point. It's also a good point. Who knows how it would play out? Heard the telltale wet thud of a bullet hitting someone, and Joseph cried out for a moment, hand sla snapping to clutch his thigh. Damn, little son of a gun still got me. Black was already starting to stir from being knocked down, and you pushed your head under one of Joseph's arms. Come on, we need to go now! You couldn't fucking. Oh, beforehand. Bap! Just bang! Okay, now we go. Like. <laughs> Fucking shoot the guy. Like, Joseph couldn't do it. Ah, whatever. Joseph held his arm around your shoulders, using your help to take some weight off, but still limping as fast as he could with the pain. You abandoned your plan to go around town and ran down the nearest alley, toward the main street, and toward the fight. 
Yeah, that's two bad decisions right in a row. He couldn't afford to get caught out by someone again, black or otherwise. Joseph was too hurt, and you had to get to the saloon. As you reached the street, everything had lulled once again. The air deadly quiet all of a sudden. Yeah, because they're all waiting for someone to poke their fucking head out. Like you're doing right now! Poked your heads out. <laughs> That's literally the fucking phrase I said. Oh, man. Wherever people were hiding, it wasn't anywhere near you. Or that you could see. The saloon was just across the street. You looked at to Joseph. His face so close to yours, and he nodded. You pushed off together, running and walking as fast as you could as you could to get across without being seen. Halfway across the wide street, the saloon porch so close you looked behind you, only to see black coming to uh, to halt to a halt as your eyes met, wiping blood off his uh, wiping blood off his face from his cracked beak. He aimed his gun at both from the alley entrance. Your heart skips a beat as you crash to the ground, pulling Joseph with you, hoping you might dodge the bullet. Ooh. A shot rings out, but you didn't but it didn't come from behind you. And in fact, you quickly look toward Black to see him ducking down. There's some Did the town not fully evacuate? Is it Sheriff? His hat was knocked off by the unknown shot. And he grabbed it before scuttling back, hiding further in the alley. Shot spooked the hiding gang members too, as a couple of shots were fired back, and then many more were added to the cacophony. Picked up Joseph and yourself off the dusty ground, seeing down the street that many more were sh that many more were shooting up some attack attackers on the roofs. Took off running in a crouch with your hand balled into a fist around your gun, and the back of Joseph's clothes dragging him with you. Or maybe the gun, maybe the uh, the townspeople are just back. Both stumbling up on the stairs of the saloon porch, you flung open the doors and helped Joseph inside with haste. There was a loud crack as the wooden door frame was struck and splintered near your head. It is a mess in this fucking place. As you turn and slam the door shut, you see Black pull away from aiming at you now, having to reload. With the door shut, your eyes adjusted to the dimly lit interior, the sun not quite shining in the same as last time you were here. Joseph stood with his injured leg slightly off the floor, leaning on a table with one hand. You go over to him and unholster your gun, handing it to him by the barrel, handle pointed upward. You take it, you need something better than that shotgun. I have it for a reason, Calvin. I'm a real terrible shot. More likely to hit you than more likely to hit you than who I'm aiming at. And take it for good luck. I've had it for a long time, and it's always done me well. And give you a hesitant look still. You both knew time was of the essence, but he didn't want to put you in danger. You trusted him. You knew this wasn't dangerous. Two revolvers two revolvers isn't much good to me. Oh. <laughs> Forgot he only had one arm for fucking second. <laughs> but if you run out of fucking ammo with one, it'd be pretty good to have the other one just in case. Be quicker than reloading. Be better than just getting rid of the other fucking gun. I, I, this seems like an odd choice, but all right. Just take it and hide. Black's still coming after us. Joseph took the pistol from you and slid his shotgun across the floor to the end of the bar, limping over to hide behind it. You ducked down behind, beside. You ducked down yourself and scuttled over the nearest window, listening to the shootout happening outside. You needed to know where Black Vulture was. You pulled up and peeked over the windowsill. As soon as you pulled your head far enough up, your eyes landed on the distant figure of Black. Rifle aimed directly at you. You immediately snapped away from the window and pressed yourself against the wall, holding still as one louder shot echoed across the wreck echoed in the street. The window next to your head broke with a shrill twang. The panes falling on the sti on on the sill and shattering either side. The floor covered with in glass. You felt a sharp pain pierce your ear and reached up for a moment and to feel your the tip missing. Oh, well, yeah, 
Even the sprite changed, yeah. Uh, we just shot the tip of her freaking ear off. Your fingers slick with blood as you brought them back down. The side of your face started to feel wet. You could feel your fur matting and sticking to itself inside your ear. He known where you were. He'd almost got you. But you knew where he was now, and he'd probably try to move to throw you off. You reared your, head, you reared your head up along with your gun, spotting Black sneaking away from where he was where he was, as he tried to avoid errant bullets. He saw you as he he saw you as you took aim through the window, but you weren't going to falter and let him get to the jump on you again. You followed his movement with your hand, watching where he was going, and squeezed the trigger with just ahead of him. Gunshot echoed through the saloon, and a single moment later, Black fell with a small spray of blood, kicking up dust as his legs splayed out. He stood up a little, still crouched, peering more clearly over the over through the window to get a better look at him on the ground. He didn't seem to be breathing. Oh, we got another Would You Rather from Lufcadio. Would you rather only be able to see the world in a shade of red, or barely hear people when they speak? I mean, I already barely hear people when they speak, but, uh... Hey, and Ghosty Specty, how you doing? Uh, I mean, there's color-correcting lenses. And there's hearing aids. I'm already gonna need to get a hearing aid soon anyway. But, hmm... Uh, Interesting wording on that one. I won't barely be able to hear people when they speak is not all sounds. And only be able to see the world in a, sh a shade of red. That's the whole world. So you could correct your vision, you know, with corrective lenses and fix that. And I already wear glasses, so that'd be an easier fucking adjustment. But barely be able to hear people when they speak. So people speaking would be very quiet. But music would be the same fucking volume. Because you didn't mention that. And there isn't like selective fucking... I'd be constantly adjusting the hearing aid. So I'd probably just go with only be able to see the world in a shade of red. Because then you could just get correct the fucking uh, uh, lenses and my glasses. Like it'd be fucking expensive. So are hearing aids. <laughs> so I'd probably go with that under the interpretation that you meant specifically barely hear people when they speak and only that as opposed to just have diminished hearing. <laughs> if you just meant have diminished hearing in general, then I would be like, I'd go with that one. Oh, colorblindness sucks. I'm not saying it doesn't. Um, I'm just saying that uh, the... The specificity of s uh, people speaking versus all sound, that muddies my answer for a bit. Gotta get a drink. Anyway, uh, the buzzard doesn't seem to be breathing. Kept watching for any sign of life, any movements. But even as bullets from the fight hit dirt and wood beside him, he didn't seem to stir. You gingerly kicked the broken glass under you aside, taking a deep breath. You slunk down and sat with your back to the wall, ears down, not wanting to attract any of the shooters still outside. The wary head of Joseph poked out from the back of the bar, looking at you, his eyes then flicking around the window. I got him. He's dead. Black's dead. We should just lie low here for a bit. Joseph nodded, shuffling out from behind the bar a bit more. Made a bit of mess of the saloon. Old Bart won't be too mad about it. He hopes so too. He guess Sheriff must have told people about what was happening, but you weren't sure. You'd help fix it up if you could. He sat there, waiting. Listening still as the fight outside died down. You could hear some distant shouts, sounds of people running, wind howling through the open window. Crunch of glass. 
y- y- you ears flicked toward the noise as a feathered hand shot through the window, grasping at your face. Oh, shit. Not good, not good. Motherfucker, not good. Why the fuck would you stay right next to the window? Do, 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 do. Well, this is scary. Oh, and all he has is a pistol. Well, he has the shotgun, but that's not good in this moment. And fucking... Uh, Joseph's a bad shot. So, this is tense. The arm grabbed under your chin and pulled you and pu- and pulled and jerked you up. Breaths came caught and strained as you were half choked to the window. You dropped your gun and desperately pulled at the arm, claws digging into the skin of Black's wing as you tried to break free. Another arm threw itself in as he got to his knees, pressed your pressing your head against the wooden windowsill, tilting your head back. You could see his face close in your periphery, and his other hand now came to your throat, something sharp and cold resting against your skin. A shard of glass glinted in the sun, and refractions danced around the dim saloon. Your claws hurt from scratching feathers out of out of his arm. You didn't want to die. Your head forced back, neck thrust forward, exposed, looking at the nothing of the ceiling above you. This is gonna hurt you much more than it's gonna hurt me. <laughs> the words brushed past your ear. You felt the arm move, the glass start to prick into your skin. Boom, shakalaka! A loud bang went off, reverberating around the room and vibrating deep in your body for a moment. You fell to the floor. Crashed into the shattered glass beneath you, twisting to look up at the window, running your hand along your throat with subsiding panic. The arms that had been around you went limp, hanging through the window along with Black's long neck, his face mo- his face motionless and frozen. The bloody chart of glass in his hand fell to the floor with a tink. The blood from his head started to drip next to it. He looked over at Joseph and saw him sitting lopsided on the floor, your revolver in his hand still pointed toward the window. Now you see why they did that, for some reason. That was the reason. Seemed a little forced, but okay. Seemed a little forced to get them into that position, but... Oh, redneck accent, we gotta do a... Would you rather have your fingers always covered in barbecue sauce or have your fingers covered in Doritos nacho cheese flavoring? Well, I'd probably go with the the cheese flavoring because barbecue sauce is sticky. The powder from the, the, the cheese flavoring is at least, you know, just a powder. But barbecue sauce is sticky, and it's hard to wash off of stuff. But yeah, Joseph! Hell yeah! You looked over at Joseph and saw him sitting lopsided on the floor, your revolver in his hand still pointed toward the window. The hell is that? Duh. I figured it out now. Thanks. Finally got a good look at it. It's cool to be passionate. I figured it out now. <coughs> do one of those pit coughs. <laughs> <coughs> Open mouth in your face. He was looking past you at Black, breathing heavily, and then looked in your eyes, his head not moving an inch, just the flick of a stare. He blinked after what seemed like an eternity, and you felt the roughness of breaths in your throat, a hoarse cough every so often. You pushed your hand against the floor and sat up. Joseph 
Joseph putting the gun down carefully beside him. I think we got him for real, then. He gave a small nervous chuckle, as did he. War gunshots started up outside, only less than before. You got on your knees, holstering the gun you dropped, carefully crawling over to the over the broken glass across the floor to Joseph. He took a gentle hold of your shoulder, shorter arm, a warm, gentle squeeze. We might be in danger here still if someone sees us, especially with the big old beak there being a window ornament. Uh, yeah. We could go into the storeroom for now, I suppose. He looked over the bar at the door to the store, the gentle curve of thinking on his brow before meeting your eyes again. The saloon has rooms, don't it? I think that's what Bart said. Yeah, it must be upstairs. They can go up there and fuck. <laughs> this, is, this game doesn't have porn. And this would be an incredibly inappropriate time to do it. Shouldn't we go up? Be a darn lot safer and comfier than down here. You thought about it for a moment. Your only worry was whether you might get blood on something for when Bartholomew came back. Thought considering the state of the saloon already, you thought, what the hell? Deal with it later, together. Yeah, alas. You stood up and helped Joseph with his stiff thigh still. You get up to get up too. You walked briskly together past the window, out of sight. You took your time getting up the stairs, taking it slow for Joseph, who was huffing and breathing through gritted teeth as he made his way up. You stumbled along the landing, one arm around each other, toward the furthest room. Very nice, very nice room. Twisting the handle, you open the door with some haste, shuffling inside together. Turned and closed the door as quietly as you could, still bumping against the frame, the handle creaking as it turned beneath your hand. You waited there, facing the door, giving yourself a moment, breathing slowly, feeling the metal in your palm, gripping it tightly. With the door closed, the peppering of gunshots from outside was much softer. You could imagine them as raindrops against the window. Nice room. You let go and turn to look around the room. You agreed, it was nice. It was bright, the sunlight skimming in through the window, curtains open, fading onto the pillows. Clean bed, side table, dresser. You wandered over to the bed, reaching out to touch, but thinking better of it when feeling the blood sticking between your fingers. Large rug laid on the floor next to the bed, so instead you lowered yourself down to sit on it leaning back to rest against the bed. You rested your head against that. You rested your head against it too, and at least feeling the softness of the sheets brushing against your fur, you need to curve your neck. Yeah, because that's not where the blood was fucking coming from in the first place, defeating the whole fucking purpose. Joseph still stood where he was, looking into the middle distance. After a few moments, his glassy stare turned down to you, coming back to life. What do we do now? We wait. Wait for the fight to die out. Once they realize who's died, they should leave. Hopefully we won't be looked for. I don't know about that. <laughs> they know who came with them. And they all, if they know who died, then they'll know who was there and who wasn't. <laughs> Gotta get a drink real quick.
back. Hold on, I just, I, I've got some confusing things on my phone, I gotta check. I'm sorry. Take my little hand. Got so much stuff to fucking pay, to catch up on on uh, extracurricular activities. I just can't stream the fucking thing. <sighs> Gotta sit down and record it, and then edit it, and then edit it again. Take out the stuff that doesn't go up on OnlyFans, because that's a thing now. By the way, in case you didn't know. Um, uh, I'm going to be doing, I have set up, and it's in the link tray, in the, uh, in the doobly-doo down below, for, uh, future recorded episodes, um, the, uh, the recorded episodes will have, uh, uncut versions, uncensored versions, on uh, OnlyFans. <laughs> you can fucking believe that shit. I've made a fucking OnlyFans. So, if you want to subscribe to that, because uh, I would just do it on my existing Patreon, but uh, Patreon doesn't like adult content. So, that's a thing. What's also a thing, something I need to tell Bree. Hey, Bree! Oh, you can hear me? Okay. Um, oh, today is the 13th. Oh, well, then you definitely need to know this. Um, from weather.com. From 5 p.m., which we're already past that now. Uh... Okay. Includes us. Yeah, John. I... From 5 p.m. to Thursday at 1 a.m., tornado watch. Oh, shit. Well, I guess I'm not dashing. Yeah. I was thinking of doing that later today, too. But I guess fucking not. Seems to be mostly. Um, seems to be mostly Missouri and only barely clipping us. You can see that. Yeah, and just sort of like barely taps through us. But uh, the stuff that taps us. Yeah, it's it's the red. So. Hey, hey, Max Pixels gifted two subs to Triple X Dora Quadruple X and Gail Theris. That is 10 bucks donated by Max Pixels. Let me reset the. There we go. Thank you, Max Pixels. Let me go ahead and write that down. Let me update the uh, the timer here. That'll be 30 minutes being added. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Cool. We're up to 7 hours, 19 minutes, and 14 seconds. If a tornado doesn't hit us. And then let me update the... Where the fuck is it? The subathon goal here? Shaboom! There we go. It has been updated. I'm from blank space we got. Hi Vivian, I'm broke as fuck university student, so unfortunately I can't sub, but I wanted to stop by and say that I think you're super awesome. Well, I think you're super awesome, and I wish you luck on your studies. Thank you very much for coming in, and I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Oh, yes. For pretty much most of our adult lives, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went straight into university after high school, and I was broke then, and uh, I, I've, I've got two degrees now, and I'm still broke as fuck. <laughs> you, did you get your associates, or did you just... Uh, full bachelor's. Full bachelor's. Yeah, so. Okay, so you, you got full bachelor's, you've got most of a master's degree. 45 out of 60 credits. Um, maybe. I hope not, but what it sounds like is that you're going to have to start all over because of moving states. But yes, uh, you have the better part of two, two degrees, two more impressive degrees than me. I have two associate's degrees. You have a bachelor's and the better part of a master's. I have two associate's degrees, and both of us are broke as fuck. So yes, we understand, blank space, what it's like being a broke university student, so don't feel bad. We just appreciate you being here, so thank you. Uh, and we think you're super awesome too. And we're back over the seven hour mark. Um, we've raised $175 out of their $2,000 goal from this subathon. Just today, we've done um, 65 of that. So that's pretty fucking cool. That's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, oh, excuse me. And, um, yeah, the clouds are looking a little more severe than I was anticipating, so... Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Well, his door is closed. Yeah. Um, Bree was gonna go with Jesse, who the, uh, the little gym room they have here at the the apartment complex because they they're trying to do that uh, a couple times a week, three times a week they try to do it and uh, it just seems like it might not be happening. Of course, he might also just have his door closed because I'm streaming, but I I can't I can't tell. Oh okay. Well, you know if he's awake, he's on Discord. <laughs> Yeah, we have seven hours and 16 minutes left. And if we can get through all that without the weather interrupting us or my computer breaking down or my health breaking down, then that's cool. Uh, we'll be able to do that. Um, if we don't, then I will make sure to write down the, uh, the time and we'll start it up on the next one. And if you want to, if you want to and can uh, add to the time, um, five dollars will get you 15 minutes and that's incrementally so if you donate increments of five dollars you get increments of 15 minutes added to the stream you can do cash app paypal um coffee uh youtube super chats youtube memberships uh twitch subs bits uh, YouTube, uh, twitch bits carrier pigeon What? Uh, yeah, what the fuck does that have to do with what I'm talking about right now? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> know. Well, fucking. But yes, um, but only do that if you want to and can. Um, it's totally understand. Totally understand. And our $2,000 goal, that is our. Uh, that is the amount that we need to, to, to survive. It, thing is. I remember seeing this, um, 
I don't remember. It's the person that does those like um, video game animations. Uh, I don't remember what what they're called. But he has like Christian Kirby or like Speedrun Mario or what oh, all those. They're really fucking fun. Um, and uh, he, he put one thing I, at, at the end of his video where he was like, if just like 5% of the people who subscribe to me donated a dollar a month, I'd be able to do this full time. And that's the case for me. If if five percent, or is it twenty? It's something. It's a fifth. It was a fifth. For me, I don't have as many fucking subscribers as he does. If if twenty percent of the people who subscribe to my channel, terminal montage. Thank you, Ravitz. Great fucking job. Also, hi, Ravitz. <laughs> uh, you're on. You're on the Patreon. You're there. Um, you're on. Uh, let me see. It's starting soon. Bam. There you are. You're on uh, Twitch and the Patreon. You're right there. Hehe. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh, uh, the game popped away because uh, I clicked on. Because I clicked away from it. But don't worry, the game is still up. I'll just have to go click over on it. But yes. Um, this so I'm I'm encroaching upon eleven thousand subscribers. Yeah, Despa's on all three. That's why you got. Uh, that's why you get this special color. The colors of the names on the uh, on the end slate there correspond to where you are donating on it. That's uh, <laughs> that's that's why they're all in different colors. But yes, um, so I'm encroaching upon eleven thousand subscribers. If if only. A fifth of those people donated a dollar a month, just one dollar a month, I'd be able to do this full time. That's it. Like, we live with roommates. We we live pretty well within our means. We're not fucking eating out. We're not doing crazy shit. Just live at home. I wish we could yeah, that'd be nice, but we we don't. Um, but we. <laughs> Brie can't even go afford to see Kung Fu Panda. But no, um, if I may finish, please. Uh, out of the 11,000 subscribers I've got here, if 2,000 of them were to donate a dollar a day, that's less than a fifth of the people were to donate one dollar, not a dollar a day, a dollar per month, I would be able to do this full time. As my job. Brie wouldn't even have to do. She could dedicate to her craft store. Which is the Etsy link in the description. Where she's been doing some awesome fucking designs. The the cute and creepy kind of designs. For homemade solutions. Going to be rebranded. Icarus the Ambitious. The uh, the name's in the works there. But yes. Um, awesome fucking designs there. Uh, just a little murder as a treat. All those fucking designs have been fucking in incredible. You can uh, check it out on her Twitter there. Um all the links for that are in the description as well. Uh, yeah, we've also been selling uh, books and stuff on, on our eBay, trying to raise some money for the upcoming move. Um, as we all are we're going to be less living on the floor of my brother and his roommate's apartment and going to be trying to be their actual roommates. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when we actually get a room and our dog back. Um and so, yeah, if for all the people who miss me doing more regular content, that's the solution. Quite frankly, I would just need to be able to dedicate my full amount of time. And Bree's been picking up on doing editing. She's done a couple of her own videos. I've talked to her about doing editing on some of my videos, which, you know, it's as time consuming, but it's. Yeah, not difficult and we've talked about her possibly doing that as well so if you wanted to see more more streaming and more episodes i literally would that's that's the threshold we need to make if we could both dedicate full time to it that is where we would need to be if one-fifth 
of my current subscriber count could donate one dollar a month both me and brie could dedicate to our our passions her crafts her designs crocheting her art uh her homestead projects me with episodes streaming voice acting all that other stuff us working together on both of those things you'd get more streams more episodes all of that stuff for patreon backers you get early access and for subscribers on the only fans which is a new thing you get uncensored videos uh because that's the only platform that i got that will allow that kind of shit so uh that's that is what the two thousand dollar mark is for i do not currently have any plans of putting irl pictures on the only fans because no one's no one's no one's been asking for that um i'm not above it uh but yes so that is that is where we're at Anyway, lookouts. Here it is. There's the game again. Let me get a drink real quick and we'll start reading again. He shuffled over to the bed and leaned down, groaning as he hit the rug, sitting against the bed as you did now. Sit here and hope for the best. As good a plan as we've had so far. His hurt legs stretched out against the floor as he massaged the muscle gently, bringing the other closer out the way, out of the way. Legs killing me. <laughs> well, not really, thank God. The bleeding looked like it had stopped, thankfully, but it still needed tending to before it got worse. Got a bandana around your neck, fucking ramp it around, fucking do, do the whole thing. Years flicked as you turned your head and you felt the still air stinging against the exposed tip of your ear. I reached up for a moment, feeling it, fingers running past the matted, sticky fur. The bleeding had stopped there, too. You can get patched up when all the townsfolk come back. I hope. Yeah, I'll be fine. Don't you worry. You try not to worry, settling yourself down, trying to rest. You stared at the wall of the bedroom, unsure what to think, unsure how to feel, chasing the grain of wood with your eyes. You wondered if the numbness you felt made you a monster, some strange lacking that left you sitting there bereft of feeling. What are you supposed to feel when a Curly's sitting behind a house, limp, body baking in the sun? What are you supposed to feel when black, with black draped over a window, lifelessly hanging in the shade of a porch? Of the porch. No, again, no question mark. You couldn't shake the feeling of the glass pressed against your neck through the, your fur, cold against your skin. Like it was still there. Like if you moved in a second, you'd find yourself gasping on the ground, drowning, grasping at your throat. Whew. You were brought back from your thoughts as your ears drew your eyes away from the wall, down to your side, down to where Justice's hand fidgeted, tapping against the floor. The softest of, the softest of patter, the softest of patters against the rug, an unheard rhythm from within him. His breathing caught your eye too, the noticeable rise and fall of his- What? What was that? Clean? Ah, uh, you're not gonna put more in because of the weather? Totally fair, totally fair. Yeah, it was sunny like 20 minutes ago, <laughs> and now it's fully cloudy.
Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what you want. Yeah. Bree and her friend have been doing like a role play chat of something of various stories called uh, the story since they were kids uh, across various chatting platforms, and uh, so yeah, they're, they're very attached to it. Um. First of the would you rather's from Lafcadio Young. Would you rather be a mermaid or be a princess? I'd prefer to be a princess. One, you don't have to go in the ocean. Two, um, fucking, <laughs> uh, wealth and power. <laughs> um, yeah. Not necessarily. Modern day princesses don't have to do with that kind of thing. <laughs> You're the king. <laughs> Seawater would be murder on the hair. Exactly. I love you. It's moist. Oh, it's moist outside. She says, uh, "That's not exactly the kind of thing you want to hear when uh, you get a tornado on the roof coming." You know. On the coming. What the fuck's wrong with me? And the second, would you rather from uh, Lafcadio Young is, would you rather, and I'm imagining that's tea or coffee. I don't drink either one. I don't. I don't drink coffee or tea. I prefer cold water. That is it. No flavoring. No. Well, I, I used to do flavoring in my water, but I've just found I just don't want to do flavoring anymore. I just prefer not. I just, I just don't. If I'm going to have flavored drinks, it would be flavored water, but not with tea. I don't like tea. I, there was one tea that I did, I did enjoy. Uh, yeah, Max Pixels. Street water is so underrated. Absolutely. Uh, there was, but there was one tea that I did kind of enjoy. Um, Briar's Thorn. Um, sent it to me and Bree for Christmas a couple years ago. It tasted like Christmas. It was incredible. I have no idea what the flavor was, but it was great. Um, it was the only tea I've ever liked. But yeah, I, I my favorite drink used to be milk, but now milk has turned on me. It uh, is not nice to me. I still like to drink it when I can pretend that it's not going to be mean to me later. But yeah, fucking water, man. Water, man. Water, man. Anyway. Uh, okay. His breathing caught your eye, too. The noticeable rise and fall of his chest. The long exhales through his nose. Your eyes continued up his sullen face. The feathers of his head subtly shaking. Nerves bubbling to the surface. You looked back down to his hand and found yourself reaching across, reaching out to take hold. Joseph jolted as you touched him, his hand almost reflexively jerking across out to yours, out of yours. As he came back to the world, you looked down. Ooh, Despa says that they have a tea that tastes like strawberry cream savers. I've heard good things about strawberry cream savers, but I've never had one myself. Shame. 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 <laughs> we gotta reset my position. I'm facing the wrong way. There we go. Get those tits back facing forward, lady. He raxed his arm when he saw, squeezing you a little and letting you steal his hand away into your lap. He was trembling as you st stroked your thumb of his the feathers, squeezing his hand back firmly. Your hands moved around each other, grappling and dancing, exploring each other's fingers and palms. A distraction of each other's fur and feathers, just the two of you. Would you rather stop showering or stop brushing your teeth? Jesus Christ. I... Ugh, I... Uh, okay. So... Here's the thing about that. 
That question does not say that you are, you know, you're, you're free from the consequences of these things. <laughs> Just, which one would you rather do? <laughs> um, still accepting that you have the consequences of not showering. Uh, you don't need teeth to eat. There's soup. There's mashed potatoes. Applesauce. Peas, IV saline solution. Holy shit. Oh, sorry. That was a very, very bright flash of lightning. Oh, Bree's not going to like being outside for that. Bree's not comfortable around uh, storms or being outside in storms. Um, in fact, her... Uh, Oh, wow. IV saline solution, my favorite. <laughs> um, but yeah, Brie, her manifestation of stress in dreams is tornadoes. Very on point, on brand for a Kansan, uh, even though she was born in, in a different state. Um, so I really hope she is feeling okay. You know what? Uh, I'm actually going to take a break for a moment and and go to be with her outside because I know she's not going to be feeling comfortable and I could use a break. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go help. Uh, I'm going to go help Bree be outside because I know she's not going to be feeling comfortable. I'll be right back, y'all.
Okay, I am back. Let's get the chats back up. Ba -ba -da boom. There we go. Let's catch up on the chats real quick. Sorry about all that. Um. The uh, yeah, there was a. Uh, thank you for the welcome back. Yeah, uh, for a bit there, I uh, I was sitting in front of the, the webcam because uh, I, I I was intending to come back on, but uh, uh, and, and so you could see my my model was still moving around. I just uh, I didn't I didn't anticipate being uh, sitting in front of the webcam and not streaming for so long. But um, to answer some of the uh, the questions that were were asked while I was gone. Uh, would you rather stop showering or stop brushing your teeth? There were some good points made um, that, uh, you know, uh, flossing and mouthwash are not brushing your teeth. and But they're pretty close, and you could get uh, teeth cleaning. They're, that's way more expensive. But uh, not showering? You could bath. You could take baths. That's actually way easier. I guess I just do that. I mean, I'd have to get a, a big bath for me, because I'm. Jet baths. Yeah, but it's more convenient than <sighs> having to eventually get dentures, because you can only do so much with flossing and, and mouthwash. So I'd probably stop showering as much as I prefer showering to bathing, especially since I don't fit in my bath. Uh, next one was, would you rather live alone on a tropical island or live with other people in, in Antarctica? Um, I'd rather live with other people in Antarctica. Uh, socialization, resources, um, less chance of dying. <laughs> um, would you rather always have mud in your shoes or always have a pebble in your shoe? Uh, I'd rather always have mud in my shoes, um, cause, uh, <laughs> doesn't hurt. I mean, pebble hurts, and you can wash off mud, and you could wear sandals. Kind of solves that problem, really. Um... Hey, and then hello, blank space. Welcome back from Ravitz. Uh, and Despa, and then Despa says, I'm going to do a murder. Um, well, have fun with that. Now, let us get back to that. It has gotten seriously cloudy and dark outside. Uh, so I want to try to get as much of the game done as I can uh, before the weather happens. Um, I would have rather have gotten more into the game than this by now but you know can only do so much with what you got so uh joseph's arm being pulled away from him startled uh from him started startled started to make him lean uh his body subtly shifting inch by inch closer to you he started to tilt and his head tilted too laying on your shoulder with a comforting heft of weight laid your head on his feather ends tickling you through your fur he untwisted his arm into a comfier position, keeping it near. He took a hold again, holding the back of his hand, digging your fingers in between his, intertwining. Now you were both still, only the small movements of, get, get, of getting comfortable to, to disturb you, hands fidgeting together. We're alive, huh? Did we really do that? No, there's no way. We, when we rolled up on clemency and I saw you, I, I thought we had no shot. How do we make it out alive? There was an incredulity to his voice that weighed in your heart. He was right. He nearly died. What in the fuck are you doing? Have to get my charger. Your charger? Yeah, my laptop charger. Okay. Oh. Hold on, y'all. Ghost up again. Ah, 
That was a solid two, three minutes that we got in. <laughs> See how long we can go this time. Nearly, but you didn't. You're still alive. You're still here with him. Yeah, the art style of the game is very cute. I don't think I care about the how or the why. We're still alive and they aren't. All that matters to me is that I'm sitting here with you. I can feel how warm you are. Joseph sat up at that, his head no longer on your shoulder as he turned to look at you. Looking into your eyes. The music stopped. Oh god. You find your hand let go of his, reaching up. Wanted to feel him, feel his warmth. The way his stomach moved as he breathed. His heart beat his heart still beating strong inside him, like it was reaching out to you. Quickening as you as your hand lay on his chest. You felt your own heartbeat thrumming louder now, like you had just minutes ago. Not out of fear this time, not that kind. As you reached up past his shoulder, he closed his eyes as your hand rubbed gently up his neck, feathers fluffing, stroking up till you cupped his face. The feathers of his face were soft, intermingled with the dust and dirt, the specks of dried blood that you felt beneath your hand. He opened his eyes again, those big honey gold and brown rings that started to flick around your features, studying you. Looking at you in a way you don't think you ever have been before. He cleared his throat a little, dry and unsure of his words, but wanting to say them all the same. You know, I didn't... I don't... Did I ever tell you how... Handsome you are. Oh, look at this smile. He couldn't help you a little snort as you laughed, turning your face away, giggling over the nervous trip of his words. Oh, no, I don't think he did. I was wondering what that little line was that was going over uh, Calvin's face there. It was uh, Joseph's. Cigar smoke. Oh, come on, Calvin. Uh, see, there it is. Yeah, it's the cigar smoke peeking right through uh, Calvin's eye there. A little bit of a layering issue. Uh-oh. Looking back at him, it felt like your faces were closer. Your laughter subsided. Cheeks started to warm as the sweetness of his words tricked into your thoughts, trickled into your thoughts like honey. You found yourself leaning in slowly, slowly, as did he, your eyes glancing at each other's mouths. <laughs> the stretch of tension in your back as your head pushed forward had your hand buried in the softness of his feathers pulling him closer. Eyes meeting once more, just a moment before. Dun, dun, dun! Smoochy kiss! Well, that's adorable. Ah, oh, that's lovely. Your face was mad. You pressed your lips to the end of his beak, his hot breath on your lips, and your mouth as yours was in his. You held the kiss there, holding your lips to his, unsure if this is what you were supposed to do. You never kissed anyone like this before. You hadn't met anyone like Joseph before. Just want to be close to him like this. Your heart was beating hard in your chest, your cheeks flushed and hot. You heard what sounded like sweeping, realizing that your tail was wagging across the floor. A few more seconds passed before the kiss was broken, your hand falling from his face to hold onto his arm. Well, that was just god dang adorable. He looked at each other with quivering breaths. You could feel the strong rhythm of his heartbeat in your hand. A 
big gracious smile spread across Joseph's face. You matched it with a more sheepish one, embarrassed still, despite everything. I'm guessing you've kissed anyone with a beak before. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I haven't. Or anyone without one, for that matter. Well, if it really was your first time, I got nothing to complain about. I'd just say it was very, a very mammal kiss. <laughs> oh, really? Now, <laughs> do educate me. You have a lot of lip to it. Birds can't do that so well, you see. So we tend to kiss a little differently. Your face warmed even more, your ears burning as he leaned even in closer, talking softly. Let me show you. One hand came to rest on your leg as he leaned forward, his beak past, past flush with your snoot. You closed your eyes as he came closer, the whispers of his breath warm on your face as the tip of his beak gently poked at your cheek. He preened and rubbed his beak through your fur, almost nibbling at you, feeling soft scrapes against your skin. Joseph's affections continued against your cheek, the feathers of his face close to your nose, smelling of sweat and tobacco. Tobacco! Yeah, the weather outside's not looking great. I'm sorry. Uh, my guess would be the bathroom. It's the most center room in this place, and this apartment complex doesn't have a basement. There's only apartments in this building, man. No. We don't know anyone else in the building. No. The closest thing we got to a local shelter is the, uh, the leasing office. You're one bringing it up. Why would I look it up? There's the fire station across the street. Well, while she looks that up, I'm gonna fix my model here. Brap. Gilthers with the the big bird eyes. He nuzzled through the fur of your face a few moments more before rubbing his beak all along your snoot as he dipped his head back. He opened your eyes again, bemused by Joseph's new kiss, to gaze upon his bashful face. From the blush of his cheeks to the unusual shyness he was trying to shrug off, he felt as if he'd- Aaron! 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 <laughs> um... She's wanting to know what the tornado contingency plan is. Right. I'm agnostic. She is somewhat spiritual. You're ambivalent, and Jesse is. There's, there's, there's no basement. Place to go through. That's what I thought. A, for here, I thought the bathroom. She's looking up local shelters. Yeah. I know there's the fire station over there. She's. If anyone's gonna find anything, she's gonna see. Oh, That's also something I thought of. All right. See ya. Well, this has been a thoroughly, <laughs> thoroughly fun uh, topic of conversation. Anyway. Uh, from this to that, you felt as though you'd been entrusted with a secret. <laughs> what do you make of that? I think I like mine better, but I can get used to those two. He slipped an arm around your back, holding you closer as your heart fluttered at the thought of familiar kisses. I'd be happy to oblige. His face beamed with a warm smile, and he leaned forward to rest his head atop yours. You reached your hand across him and grabbed his other hand, pulling it into his lap, 
keeping you all close in a bundle, like a bundle of sticks. Letting your mind focus on him, feeling his hand squeeze your side gently, squeezing his other hand back. You know, I just realized if we're going to have severe weather potentially, I, sh I should be charging my phone. Hold on. Oh, that's great. I'm sorry, man. All right, now I got my phone plugged in. Uh, relatively prepared, I guess. Listening to his breathing to the small shuffles of his clothes, to the faint beat of his heart and his chest. The music faded out, so maybe the plot will come back? Not that I'm not enjoying this cute moment, don't get me wrong, I'm just worried about, you know, the murders happening outside. You're flicked around a little as you heard something else. Ha uh ha -huh, there it is, some subtle noise you wanted to ignore, focusing on the warmth of Joseph. I find the street seemed to be over. No longer could you hear the muffled shots, the pops or bangs or cracks that split the air. What you could hear now, though, were rhythmic sounds. Distant and soft, but growing louder by the second. The caravan. It was footsteps. First at the stairs. Now coming along the landing, coming closer. Uh-oh. Set up sharply, knocking Joseph in the chin a little. As you heard one of the doors open and then close. Or it was, was checking the rooms. Joseph sat up as he took note of the noises as well, realizing the same as you. Someone was looking for you. Or at least, someone was looking for stragglers. You snapped to your gun and pulled it from its holster, aiming it square at the door. You had more doors open and close. Forever, whoever it was would be here in just a few seconds. Footsteps grew that little bit louder, and you found something familiar within them. There were four footsteps, two people, but there was... Ah, there was another offbeat thump there, out of pace. A fifth footstep, a cane! It's Sheriff! As the hunters came to the door, you realized what it was. Hand coming down, pointing the gun away. Joseph whispered urgently, What are you doing? It wasn't another footstep you heard, it was a thump of a cane. The door swung open with two fing figures standing in the doorway. A moment of uncertainty had you pointing the gun back their way. He put it away again, though, and sure enough, he saw who you were expecting. It was Sheriff, along with a man unfamiliar to you, a lanky, serious-looking hare, leaned in, still holding the door handle. Whoa! Put that thing away there! We don't mean you no harm! Both of them had rifles slung over their shoulders, and Sheriff's worried face turned one of relief when you met you, when, he, when you met eyes. And there I was getting all twisted up worrying about you two. I knew you'd be alright. Sheriff? What are you doing here? I thought everyone was out of town. Well, everyone is. Except for us. Oh, uh, I should introduce you. This is Matthew. He stayed behind to help me. I couldn't go with everyone else. Uh, I was worried about the town and you boys. So Matthew and I stayed here to help however we could. We were up on the roof shooting as a distraction. I hope it was of some help. Wait, I knew it. I knew I said there was someone else here. I knew it. Wait, that was you? I thought you were supposed to be pacifists. Well, we didn't actually shoot anyone. We just shot near them. <laughs> trying to tip the scales in your favor and give them something else to worry about. Looks like that made the saloon a bit of a target, though. Bartholomew's not going to be happy about this mess. I'm sorry. We'll do whatever we can to help. 
Matthew waved it off cheerily. Don't worry, my husband's a very forgiving man, but the saloon is like his baby. He'll want to know you're all right, but after that, he's going to want to fix it up. Oh, I had an eyelash in my eye. So this was the husband? Huh. He didn't think the first meeting with him would be like, like this. Seems like he got banged up pretty bad, too. I don't know if we should have done more. Oh, uh, I think you may well have saved our lives. We knew the danger of what we were what we were doing. Oh! That's a shelf. Damn. So I didn't. I didn't mean to scare you, but that's fucking scary. That's scary looking. There's this big fucking dark cloud line just right across the fucking field of view out the window. Woof. It's like you can see that it's not nighttime yet out there. And so seeing such a dark cloud contrasted with what should still be evening is uh woof fucking woof <laughs> woof <laughs> can you check to see if uh, how my stream's doing real quick doing viewer count stuff like that oh, I got three right now how you doing and that's on YouTube she's not checking the twitch right now thank you me That's a language I don't understand. I don't know what that's saying, but I have a translate camera on my phone. So let's see if what this person is saying. Definitix no bow. No don't. I'm gonna see what you said. I'm gonna do it. I wanna know. Yep. Uh, English to detect. Oh no, no, it's actually detect language to English. Do, 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 do. Let's see what this person said. Okay. <laughs> what? What does this say? Okay, I gotta hold my arm still. Vivian, what are you doing, dear? Are you giving it from the ass, my love? <laughs> what the fuck? I... Okay, let me... Is that actually what that says? Come on, camera, could you focus? Come on, me, could I, could I focus? No, not ass. Mind you, this is Google Translate, so it's not gonna... There we go. It'll only do as good as it can. <laughs> Alright, you said something else, so let's see if that translates. I love if I knew I would write nice things. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's just a, it's a language barrier, but that's all right. Let's see. But you are smart. You okay? Let, sorry, hold up. 
You were smart. You can't do this. I'm extremely embarrassed. You don't need to be embarrassed. I think the translation is wrong. That's all right. Google Google Translate translates things wrong all the time, and being even partially multilingual is incredibly impressive. You don't have to be embarrassed about getting things wrong. One, you're trying, which is already more than most people do. So you have you have that to be proud of. And two, you got you're getting a lot of things right as is. So you have that to your credit. So you have no reason to be embarrassed. You you fucked. <laughs> Aw, said my voice is beautiful, you were just curious. Well, thank you. This normal. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Whoa. Sorry, I looked over at the sky again, and it, it was like five minutes ago that it was a straight line across, and now it's completely different again. <laughs> yeah, we're in for a storm tonight. Oh my. Uh, let's see, what is... What is that? What's the new message say? <sighs> my phone is not focusing. Let's forget about this situation. You're extremely embarrassed. Well, as much as I want to say that you'd have no reason to be embarrassed, I don't want to keep doing anything that's making you feel bad, so I will I will move past it. I'm sorry if I did anything that made you feel bad. Um, but I appreciate you being here. Thank you for the compliment. And uh, I personally feel like you have no reason to be embarrassed, And I, uh, but uh, I hope you feel better about yourself and about your uh, language capabilities. And we will move on. We will move on. It's alright if your English is not that good. That's alright. My Turkish isn't that good. I don't know... I don't know if I know any words in Turkish. That's what the language said, uh... That's what Google said the language was. It said it was Turkish. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I'm trying to learn Spanish and sign language. I tried to learn Japanese. I didn't last that very long in that. But uh, anyway, we he said, move on. We're moving on. Anyway, thank you for helping us like that. You didn't have to. Yeah, thanks. We owe you one. Don't mention it. We'll ask for your help when you're better, but right now you need some seeing to. Uh, okay, we got a question from Blank Space. What got you into FVNs? For me, my computer was pretty weak, and VNs are some only things that work on it, so you eventually stumbled into the amazing world of FVNs. Well, um... What got me into FVNs was honestly, um, it was doing the videos for Amorous and then getting recommendations for actual furry visual novels. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was a happy accident, honestly. Are you okay? Okay. No. Oh. Well, the breeze is very scary the weather. Oh, I, I need to plug in my uh, my phone again. Now I'm not using the uh, translate camera as much. Look for you, the town doctor is here. I understand. We, <laughs> we both have lived in Kansas. We we know what it's like being in a tornado. Do you want to be on the couch? You're not right next to the window. Okay. Taking them down? Whatever you want. 
do you want to do them and make you feel more comfortable? Where? You're looking at them. Oh, sorry. Nothing to apologize for. We've all had quite the day. What happened to everyone else? We told them to... Oh, we told them to leave. The bosses are dead and we said more people would be back soon, too. None of them felt like sticking around. You're safe. Inside yourself there was some deep sigh of relief. Didn't realize you'd been holding on... That you didn't realize you'd been holding on to. Like you hadn't breathed right in days. He nodded gratefully. Matthew came into the room and started attending to Joseph first, looking over his injuries. You're both hurt, and bruised, and bloody, but you were safe now. You wondered how long it would be until you could believe that. This looks like an epilogue. Oh, I gotta save. Hold on, hold on. That looks like an epilogue. That oh, that definitely looks like an epilogue. Black square, that tiny black square. You're not sure if you knew back then. Or when you or when you realized that you'd carry the scars from that day for the rest of your lives. You and Joseph were put in separate rooms at the saloon by Bartholomew, who insisted you stay so that Matthew could treat you both. The month you spent resting and recovering there was full of sleepless nights. Nightmares came often, some more vivid than others. Why would they insist on you staying in separate rooms? Well, it's weird. You often woke in the early morning to find you and your bed sheets drenched in sweat. Some nights you were woken by Joseph shouting. Some nights you'd sit up in bed, waiting for him to come into your room and crawl in, lying with him until you fell asleep. Other nights, where you felt shaken and sick by what you were dreaming about, you'd wake him, asking if you could sleep in his bed. Neither of you talked much otherwise. You kept to yourselves in your rooms, resting. Doctor's orders. You weren't sure of their benefits, but Matthew brought you your medicines occasionally, often some concoction involving whiskey. He joked about the perks of having a bartender for a spouse. The taste was vile to you still, but you found it helped just a little. It was odd, you thought. The, the respite of bed rest felt like you, ju like you just as much. That the respite of bed rest felt like just as much work as being up and about at the camp. Sometimes felt like resting was the last thing you were doing. As the days rolled by, there did come the point that you'd been waiting for. Were you both feeling fit enough to get up and do something? You still kept to the saloon, only seeing a handful of familiar faces at odd times. The saloon was already clean and mostly fixed up by the time you were recovered enough to lend a hand. Felt like you'd missed your opportunity to help out, but Bartholomew assured you he'd need help when the new windows were to be fitted. He also brought up that neither of you had joined him on the nightly gathering at the saloon. Now that you were better, everyone would love to see you. You'd heard the gatherings all those nights you were been resting. Attendance waxed and waned, but every night the saloon was bustling and merry. Full of people enjoying each other's company, singing songs, telling stories. The idea of being in the midst of that crowd put ice in your stomach. Joseph happily agreed to come along to the next gathering, and so did you. You knew really, you knew really that it would be good to be around people. And now you were here, standing in front of the window in your room, looking out, past the vague reflection of your face in the glass. Night had fallen. Lights and houses down the street snuffed out one by one as people left for the saloon, the downstairs filling with the town. Already you could hear the muffled sounds of mingling, chatter, spatters of loud laughs that had grown familiar to you through the walls kept looking out the window into the dark desert, knowing that you'd, you'd have to move soon. Just waiting another second, another minute. You had to go. Go on, leave the room. 
short sigh at yourself sent you off, walking across the room to meekly open the door. Okay. <laughs> God! 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 It's very nice. You pulled it open just a crack. The warm lamplight. <laughs> the warm lamplight in the saloon spilling in. And to your surprise, you found Joseph standing there. One hand raised, about to knock on your door, he flashed you a little smile, clearly asking if he could come in. You opened it just enough to let him in before closing it, leaning with your shoulder to the door as he stood close to you. Hey. Hi. Your greetings practically stumbled over each other, both clearly, clearly antsy, trying to get some words out. Are you ready? You chewed the inside of your cheek a little as you thought. You wanted to be ready. He <laughs> can certainly he can certainly come in. <laughs> oh Gale. <laughs> you wanted to go down and see the people who cared for you? Who had cared for you? Joseph was here, too. It, it would be fine. I'm not ready, either, if it helps. I figure if we dilly-dally about it, though, we'll never be ready. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You sighed, and Joseph patted you on the shoulder, a little reassurance to get you going. All right. Let's go have a good time. That's the spirit. Joseph follows close behind you and as you open the door wide and stepped out, as adjusting from the darkness of your own. He closed the door as you left and you walked along the landing together, down the stairs, looking out over the disparate crowds. Clemency was a small town, but with so many packed into here, it felt like even the busiest of bars you'd glanced inside of before. As you neared the bottom of the stairs, you heard a, heard a voice call out. I don't remember Bartholomew's voice. Calvin! Joseph! Go over here! You looked over at the bar and saw Bartholomew waving at you, his arms stuck up high to catch you over the taller patrons milling past. It wasn't just him either. Standing at the bar were other familiar faces you were happy to see, namely Jacob and Sheriff. You took Joseph's hand and walked through with him, excusing your way past people to the bar. Sorry, had to do something. Jacob and Sheriff sidled along to make some room between them. A friendly gap for you to both squeeze into. It's good to see you well again, Galvin. I found myself rather worried after what happened. I'm glad to see you too, Jacob. I didn't lose another limb, so I guess I have nothing to complain about. He gave you a gentle, reassuring smile, seeming genuinely calmed by your jokey reassurance. Sheriff leaned in to address you both. It's good to see you both in good health, for sure. And you'll be in even better health with a drink down you. Bartholomew? So, what am I here? Just what am I here for? On the house, fellas, what are you drinking? Damn, really? You sure? We, we've been taking up your rooms and now free drinks? You're really spoiling us. You need something so we can toast your health. Go on, take your pick. Oh, I'll just stick with the beer. All right, it was about you, Calvin. Um, can you do me a whiskey? 
felt jealous of giving you a quizzical look. Surprised you'd choose such a hard liquor. Sure thing! Let me get on those. He turned and busied himself with finding what you'd ordered, and you looked at Joseph, his face still confused of your choice. Ah, you've acquired a bit of a taste for it. No, I can respect it, just didn't see it being your kind of thing. I'm full of surprises, huh? Sure are. He felt a little brush, uh, felt a little blush rise to your cheeks as he gave you a wry smile. Bartholomew set down a stout tumbler of whiskey alongside the beer on the counter. He took your drinks as the sheriff started to speak. That's more like it now. A toast to Calvin and Joseph. You boys pulled off something incredibly brave, and I'm thankful you made it. Yeah. He went around clinking glasses with Jacob, Joseph, Sheriff, and Bartholomew before taking a sip of your whiskey. Before it even reached your lips, the smell was burning in your nose and continued to burn as it slipped down your throat. It was a pleasant burn of sorts, though. You weren't sure if it was the way that it was meant to be, but you enjoyed it all the same. So, boys, I don't know what your plans are now that you're all fixed up. But I thought I'd take the moment to ask if you'd like to stay in clemency. I really think you'd fit in here. It's just an invitation, mind you. No need to give me an answer right now, but just think about it for me. You and Joseph glanced eyes for a moment, both humbled and blindsided, unsure what to say. Why did the question leave you gripping your glass, fidgeting your thumb over the rim? What wasn't this something you wanted? Thank you, Sheriff. That's a very kind offer. We'll have to sleep on it, I think. Not a problem. Just a suggestion, really. Don't mind me, none. Truth be told, I can't say we have much in the way of plans as of now. Uh, yeah, no, I haven't... We've not really thought about what to do next. That was the honest truth. All you'd focused on was getting away from Curly, not from under his shadow. Now you were free. You could do anything. And yet, you could think of nothing. Tightness took hold of your chest. Well, if it isn't my favorite patience. Matthew came wandering over to the bar and greeted you both with a beaming smile. Great to see you up and at it. All thanks to you, Doc. Oh, you're too kind. I'll drink to that. He took a swig of the beer he held, as did Joseph in kind. I'm setting up a poker game right now, so I thought I'd wander around and see who's game. I'll join in. Alrighty, I've got another guy as well, so we just need one, at least one more person. You able to sneak away from the bar, hon? He spoke past you to Bartholomew, who rolled his eyes. I admire your tenacity, Matthew, but I'm not going to join in on your poker, no matter how many times you ask. All right, all right, can't blame a man for trying. Joseph caught your eye and gave you a look to ask, you mind if I go? To which you just nudged him encouragingly with your elbow. I'm game, if you're prepared to lose. <laughs> oh, that's fine talk. I should have known you'd be up for it. <laughs> Come with me to the table. Joseph gave your arm a gentle squeeze before he grabbed his beer and headed with Sheriff toward the back of the saloon. You watched him disappear in the throng of people before turning back to the bar, just left with Jacob and Bartholomew. Even in relationships like these, the, the, the fucking spouses get split up, it seems. Not a gambler then, Jacob? Oh, heavens no. Oh no, this is Jacob, sorry. Oh, heavens no. Not that I have any particular objection. I'm just terrible at it. I have to say my poker face is quite dire. Chuckled at that, certainly seeing how it could be the case. Your eyes turned down to your drink, small talk drying away. Staring into the clear liquid. Clear? What kind of whiskey are you drinking? It's clear. That streaked the glass as you rolled it around in your hand. 
Are you a whiskey drinker now? You couldn't have foreseen that a month ago. How could you have foreseen before that that you'd meet Joseph? That you'd end up here, having left the gang? Curly gone. Thinking back on it, I felt like you were always going to be under Curly's thumb. What, what else was there for you? That was going to be your life until the tides of fate swept you elsewhere. You didn't think you'd ever have a chance like this. Now you have a chance to choose your life. Everything's still just as hazy. What, what comes next? I know that look. Oh, fuck. You turned your eyes up to Bartholomew as he put his elbows on the bar, leaning in with a friendly, knowing demeanor. Hey, Tiger's Tail, how you doing? That's the face of someone with a lot going on upstairs. That or there's something very interesting at the bottom of that glass. You thinking about what Sheriff said? Yeah, it's just... I don't know. What are your plans now? You must have some idea of what you want to do. I can't say I do. I, I've not. I've not thought about it, I, I guess. You know, you don't have to stay in Clemency. You can go anywhere, really. Oh, yes, I would say I agree. Traveling is an incredible way to learn and to discover what kind of man you are. What kind of man? Indeed. It's an easy, it is easy when young to think you know the world. Think you know yourself as well. That's what I thought before I went on my pilgrimage. The man who left Pennsylvania all those years ago is not the same man who arrived in Clemency. In fact, the man who arrived in Clemency and the man sitting at this bar now are not the same either. Convening. Convening? Convening, yes. Convening with your fellow people gives a great deal of clarity and substance to your character. Oh, Tiger's Tail says, well, my nose is running and I'm coughing and my throat is on fire, but I've been home from work for the entire day downing popsicles, so a good day. Well, that sounds like a good day, other than, you know, all the bad things. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, I'm sorry to hear that you're, uh, you know, uh, not feeling well, but I'm glad you got your popsicles. It's fun. Uh, Hope you get to feeling better soon. I think I see what you mean. You know what he meant, of course. You'd run with Curly for years now. Who you were when you left home and who you are now are strangers to each other. You weren't sure if that person from years ago met you now that he'd be someone you wanted to know. It's not just yourself, either. You can learn a lot about someone else from traveling with them. Me and Matthew learned so much about each other on the trail, both the good and the bad. I don't think you really know someone until you've had to share the same bed for weeks on end. <laughs> Could be good for you and Joseph. Maybe. You can feel your cheeks turning red. Joseph had talked about riding east before, but that was more like running away at the time. What Bartholomew said stuck in your head. Oh, that's so sweet, Tiger's Tail. You could catch it up if it streams you do a lot better. That's sweet. What Bartholomew said stuck in your head. Do you even know Joseph? Do you really know him? Do you really know him? You thought you did, but really, you have only just met. You don't really know that much about each other. Well, you may feel things for me you never have for anyone else, and you've gone through hell and high water to be here together. Is that enough? Is that a reason to stick together? 
Do you want to know who he is? Do, do you want him to know who you are? You have no idea what the future holds. You, you have no idea about anything. You don't know Joseph. He doesn't know you either. You don't even know yourself. <laughs> Toro's welling up in your chest, cutting your insides, making you heavy, breathing deep, tapping your fingers on the bar. It's too warm in here. Too many people. You, you need some air. You feeling all right, Calvin? His words snapped you out of your thoughts, but the feelings remained. You nodded subtly. Yeah, I, um, I think I'm gonna go outside and get some air. Giving them both a weak smile of reassurance, you left your drink in the bar and stepped away, passing strangers to head out the doors. The night air was refreshing as it cooled your head. You welcomed the chill breeze from the desert that ruffled through your fur. You didn't hang around long on the saloon porch, walking away into the town, leaving behind the yellow light that spilled from its windows. You left the town too, past the sign that read its name, making your way up to a path that the outskirts had brought back forlorn memories. Memories of feelings not unlike the ones you are harboring now, as you stood at the top of your climb on a familiar cliff. You took slow, deep breaths of night air, filling your lungs, clearing your head. You wandered over the cliff edge and gazed over the town, the light of the saloon stark against the inky dark. Well, I appreciate you being uh, ready and willing with the band hammer, Despa. I appreciate it. The desert was quiet, save for the whistle of wind carrying the chirp of insects. You crouched down and fell on your haunches, sitting and letting your legs hang over the edge of the cliff. It was funny to think how many life-changing things had happened to you up here. Meeting Joseph, spending the night with him, sowing the seeds of your plans to be free. Was there some comfort to being up here, perhaps? Fond and fresh memories that calmed you, reminding you of why you were here. Still, there was a gnawing feeling on your heart that no matter how much you hoped for, there, no matter how much you hoped for there not to be. Why are you feeling like this? Why are you so worried? Why are you so scared? What's wrong with you? Shouldn't this, be, shouldn't this freedom you have now be a good thing? Why does it feel like everything is about to come crashing down around your ears? What about Joseph, so sweet Joseph, that you made a promise with? You let out a heavy sigh. You didn't expect to be weighed down with so many thoughts tonight. This was supposed to be a celebration. Now you were up here, away from everyone. Many contradictions running through your mind. It's always been your answer to things. Running away. The only time you didn't was because of that promise. How stupid can you be to choose to fight? And then want to run away from everything you were fighting for? probably run away from yourself if you could. Just wish you could answer why. You sat for a little while. The wind up here was still a pleasant breeze. Blew past your head, cooling your warm ears, taking small grains of sand with it that floated off the cliff. Not thinking about much at all as you looked out into the night at the distant dark blue silhouettes of hills. Howdy, stranger. What brings you out here? You were drawn from your trance by Joseph's voice all of a sudden. You were so out of it, you hadn't even heard him approach. You turned and looked up at him. He was standing a few paces away, his beer in one hand, your whiskey in the other. 
Mind if I join you? Youth nodded at the ground, letting him know he could come sit. He walked over and lowered himself carefully to sit next to you, keeping the drink steady. He held your whiskey glass out to you by his fingers, and you took it as he put on your pa- put it on your palm. Thanks. No problem. So, like I said, what brings you out here? You absentmindedly scratched the side of your glass with a blunt claw as you thought of your answer. I just needed some air. Yeah, it was a little stuffy in that saloon. If you ask me what... If you ask me what... Hmm? Oh, if you ask me, we did Bartholomew a favor of breaking some windows. They're out the place. He giggled a little at that. He's good at making you feel better. How are you always so charming? Seems like it, it seems to come so easily to you. He looked a little bashful at that comment, scratching his head, unsure what to say. I don't know. Just picked it up over time, I guess. Helps get you out of fights and whatnot. Yeah, that makes sense. You feeling all right? Didn't say anything when you left. Sorry, I, I didn't want to bother you during your poker game. You thought about what you wanted to say, but so many things vied for your tongue. Everything swelled up inside you, chest fit to burst. You didn't know if you could admit how you were feeling to him. Almost felt too personal. Felt wrong. Felt harsh. I feel strange. It's the simplest way I can put it. He looked at you a moment, eyebrow cocked, unimpressed. Lay it on me. Huh? Lay it on me. I want to know what you're thinking. Well, you got stuff on your mind you ain't telling me. He blew through your lips with a sigh, thinking about whether you should. He was right, after all. You don't have to hide how you feel anymore. If you were honest, you didn't want to keep hiding it. I'm scared, I guess. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing, what I'm going to do next. Everyone at the saloon was asking us about plans, and I realized that I don't have any. I didn't think that far ahead. Now we're here. I don't know what to do. I think an animal that's been let out of its cage and got lost in the wilderness. What are you scared of? What's the worst that can happen? I don't know. That's why I'm scared. What if I do the wrong thing? Make the wrong decision? What if I decide to settle down in clemency, like Sheriff said, and and, and I don't like it? Where would I go? I've made... I've had so much of my life... Wasted. Running with Curly... I don't want to lose more of it to bad decisions. I've made too many of those. I don't want to waste my life either. We can make those choices together now, though. We can turn over a new leaf. I know we could. I'm worried about you, too. I I was talking with Jacob and Bartholomew, and I I realized I, I don't know you... I don't know anything about you. You don't know me either. Jessica's face was solemn. He just stared into your eyes like he was trying to unpick some meaning from your expression. I've done horrible things, Joseph. So have I. I don't know that I like the person I've become after Curly. I don't trust myself. You did what you needed to stay alive. You don't have to like it. You were going frustrated with his rebuttals. Like he wasn't listening to you. You 
twisted your body around one leg up facing him head on i love you and i'm scared of hurting you i'm scared that the man who could hurt curly is the same man that could hurt you i'm scared that if we really knew each other we wouldn't be here in the first place The wind whistled in your ears. Joseph's face was still. I squinted a little, contemplating your words. A few moments passed before he opened his beak to speak. I love you too. And I'm not scared of you. I want to find out who you are. And hope I have the courage to let you find out who I am. <laughs> I'm scared as all hell too, and... <laughs> I know what you mean. Now that I'm free of the gang, I, I don't know what to do with myself. All I know is I want to be with you. Maybe we'll make bad choices, but who cares? You helped me. S you helped show me I don't have to live my life in fear, Calvin. I think if we're scared, it means. We have our heads screwed on right. But it doesn't have to stop us from living. We can make whatever mistakes we want. We can stay in clemency forever. We can go travel in the country. I don't give a hoot. Tonight ain't the night to worry about the rest of your life. Whatever happens to us, if I can kiss your face at the end of the day, then everything will be all right. great wave of relief washed over you as Joseph spoke. You didn't realize how much you needed to hear that from him. A kiss and a prayer. <laughs> he laughed. Yeah. On a kiss and a prayer, we'll be just fine. <laughs> Story of our lives, huh? He leaned in and pecked you on the cheek bringing a blush of warmth to them that even the night breeze could not cool. Seems pretty good to me. Now, come on. Let's get you back down there and have a good time. I think someone said they were going to dust off the old piano and play us all a tune. <laughs> he, made, he made to stand up, but you reached out. Place your hand over his. Wait. Is, is it alright if we just sit here a little longer? Then we can go down. It's a nice night, is all. He smiled, eyes softly tilting to the sky, looking at the stars. It sure is. You want to stay here a spell? That's just fine by me. As you settled back down, he scooted over to you, cl scooted closer to you, shoulder to shoulder, as you tilted your head to rest on him. He slipped your hand into his, and he held yours tightly, squeezing back between your fingers. The night may be cold, but he was all the warmth you need. You spent so long looking out for yourself, looking out for people who didn't care about you. Now you can look out for each other. Oh, that was a fade out. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Oh, it was, I didn't even catch it. Looking out. Look out. Oh, that was the end. And I didn't. Oh. And they said the name of the game, too. Look out. Oh. Perfect. That was so sweet. Oh, well, there's the credits. Oh, yeah. This is a short one. Paranoid Hawk, Colin, and Fake Gamer Comics. Oh, yeah. It was a nice, happy ending. Well, that was sweet. <laughs> well, they haven't taken a bath yet in the game, but... Uh... Yeah. Well, this was... So yeah, there you go, Blank Space. That was so wholesome. Very much so. I don't know what the choices change. Um, oh, after all our friends, uh, friends and family and partners have supported us and made this possible for uh, make uh, this gay little game. It means the world to us. 
heart emoticon. That's awesome. Well, that is fan fucking tastic. Hey, there they are. Oh. Hey, there we go. That's the end. Thank you for playing Lookouts. This has been a huge project for the both of us. We're super proud and happy we've been able to share it with you after so long. If you enjoyed the game, please leave a comment or rating on Itch.io, Twitter, whatever. I love hearing from people about their time with the game. The link to the Itch page for this game is in the description down below. It's free, but you can choose to support it if you so choose. If you'd like to support us so we can keep making games, you should check out the paid gold edition. It's only five pounds or six fifty on Itch. That is. It's on the same page and the link in the description, so it's down there if you're interested. The Gold Edition comes with a bunch of stuff like the full soundtrack, loads of original art and doodles, wallpapers for desktop and mobile, and a development art book. Well, that's cool. I didn't know that. I don't look through the whole itch page before I play these games. Once again, thank you for playing from the bottom of our hearts. You can click the button that'll pop up on the next screen to restart the game. Ah, oh, call it hockey. Well, that was just the sweetest damn thing in the world. Well, that is nice. That is very, very nice. Um, well, there you go. I haven't uh, done a a game that I I finished quick in a long time, and uh, I'm very happy, very, very happy that that. Uh, was the case here, um, given that this stream has been five and a half hours long, and the first one was, uh, like two and a half hours, I think, uh, before my computer crashed. That's, that's a good, uh, that's what, eight? My dad, that's eight hours, uh. Given how much sidetracking I do, that that's that that's on that that's on brand. Considering they said it was like five six hour game on the itch page, I think. Again, I don't read the whole itch page before I play these games. I just look for the disclaimers. I don't want to get spoiled. But anyway, um, so what I'm gonna do because this subathon still has a gay and sweet, very nice, very true. The subathon still has five hours and twenty three minutes left. What I'm going to do, yes, I'm going to go ahead and quit that game there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. So I'm going to be on a little small little break, do a little bit of stretching of the legs. And I'm going to come back and figure out what we're going to play next. Because so far, the uh, weather hasn't shut down the, uh, the stream. And uh, so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to... Take a small break, and I'll be right back. Bah! 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 The mouth doesn't always work. <laughs> Boop! I'm gone. Where am I? Oh!
Hello? Hello, 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 hello? Uh-oh. There we are. Okay. Goodness gracious. All right. Let's get that off the screen. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Ha, 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 ha. Grab a drink. Grab a drink. Got a little bit of a scare while I was... Thank you for the welcome back, rabbits. I had a little bit of a scare, and Despa, thank you for the whoop. Um, because while I was uh, setting stuff, ow! While I was setting stuff up to come back in, the uh, my webcam crashed uh, for uh, uh, which made me reset. VC face, which is usually the first thing that goes. <laughs> that's usually the first thing that crashes before my whole setup fucking crashes. So that's not a good sign. Um, however, I am hoping that that does not continue to happen. So what I am going to presume is that things will continue uh, well enough I'm going to set up the next game that I want to play. Let me open up Steam. Because that, that'll that just really not fuck things up, I'm sure. Steam. that That's notoriously easy on the fucking computer. Oh, and Adobe Premiere. That'll that'll be good. That'll be great. Because I know what game I want to play. What I want to play... <laughs> well, frankly, what I want to play is uh, Fallout New Vegas. But what I want to do with that... Um, what I, what bleh, since I want to play that, I need to have um i need to have caleb with me because he he's been wanting to play that he wants to be here with me when i play that and quite frankly i want to have caleb there with me too um ow fuck and he's busy on wednesday nights so <sighs> because of that I need to uh, find an alternative. And that alternative is... Oh, hell's bells. Steam's got shit to fucking download. The alternative is Grand Theft Auto V. Because I did... I did get caught up on. Can you fucking cooperate, please, book bag. I have a bunch of stuff in my book bags. In a book bag. God damn. There's all my recording stuff in a book bag so that I can keep it all in one place. <sighs> Since I'm not in a place that's my own. Thing is, I'm just worried that. My computer will fucking explode. So hold on while I do a couple of setting changes here. Do, do, do. Oh, it is on simple expressions. Odd. Looked like it was freaking the fuck out. All right. Holding. Thank you. While we do that, feel free to do just a little bit of uh, back and forth. We could chit chat a little. I guess I don't need to wear headphones during this. Uh, let's see if the stream can hold up while I boot up Adobe Premiere Pro to update the thumbnail. I made a new thumbnail. This is the one that's currently on the stream if you're watching on YouTube, which has the subathon, the new model, the one I'm using right now, and it uh, 
has the book on it. And when I'm doing subathons, let's currently running, that will be the thumbnail that I use. And I did that so that uh, it'll be more easily conveyed as to what it is, what's going on. I could put the, the logos on the book thing there. And then once the subathon is over, I will change the subathon. I will ch I will change the thumbnail uh, to something a little more customized that combines the stuff that I've played, um, a little more accessible stuff like that. Man, Adobe Premiere Pro is taking a long time to boot up, and uh, I am not excited about the prospect of this whole thing going to shit just because Adobe Premiere Pro takes for fucking ever to load. Oh god. I really hope this doesn't fucking crash my computer. I don't... Can I show you my... Let's see. Window capture... Oh, it wouldn't be window capture, it would be display capture. Yeah, there you go. Why can't you see the whole thing? Fucking, what is that? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't fucking click on the damn thing. Okay, so... Uh, there we go. There. Now it's the whole shit again. Now you can see my whole shit. So now you're going to be able to see me making the thumbnail for this very fucking... Why... Why is it... I don't know why it's doing that. That's weird. But anyway. So let's get the chats back up. So I can actually see what you're saying. So now you can see what I do. This is actually where I have all of the thumbnails. Oh god. It is running so fucking bad. Um, all of the thumbnails for the live streams. Because the, the thumbnails for the videos I make in the project files of... Um, of the videos themselves. But for the streams, here we go. We got like, um, this is for the Fallout, obviously. Um, just update the fucking episode title. You know, the episode number. Uh, what's this one? We got <laughs> Hamster Playground. I don't think we're going to be playing Hamster Playground again. But uh, you never know. You never know. Oh, God. I gotta be careful doing hotkeys while I'm in here. Oh, what's the next one? Ah, Paper Mario. Definitely want to get back to that. I had to go through and update my model in all of these. Pokemon Stadium. That one's gonna be a bitch. Um, Civ. I had to update this one. I had to update all of them. I don't need to say that I've been updating these. Um, but I definitely want to get back to that, too. Baldur's Gate, holy fuck. Way behind on that. This, this is not a thumbnail, this is just Caleb. But uh, I needed to do this so that uh, when Caleb joins on the next episode of Fallout, he can have the little Discord thing where it shows that he's talking. Uh, this is, ah, oh, here we go. That's the old VTuber model. And then if we, okay, that's actually a different, and there's the old PNG model. There we go, and there's me. I just didn't want to get rid of them because they're so fucking hard. I have to, like, crop out. Let me see if I can... Crop out around Homer Simpson's fucking face. I've had to do that three times now. And I still haven't played fucking... Uh, it's not hit and run. That's, um... Is it hit and run? What the fuck is it? I don't remember what. Hustle Cat? Hustle Cat is on there. Hustle Cat is 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 uh, going to happen. That is definitely. Hustle Cat is is going to happen. 
Uh, let's see, what's the next one? Final Fantasy X, hell yeah. Where the demon lurks. Definitely need to get back into that as well. This one was a combo stream. And this is what's going to happen for all the subathon. Uh, anytime I do multiple games on a stream, I, I try to do this for the thumbnail so that you can see multiple, you know, what's happened in the stream. I don't want to just have one thing represented in the thumbnail so that people know what the fuck is actually happening. Um, this is the standard one for the Hayseed Night. I like it. So much going on, though. Um, <laughs> three games in this one. That was a lot. But I, I, I think it's fun seeing them all together like that. Uh, this is just me with the background. Helps me get all my profile pictures in order. Do you guys like the, the blue with the squares in the background? I've used different colors with the squares in the background. It harkens back to my love of Tetris. But uh, I don't really have a, another thing for it. I just I like it. I don't know. There's the stream returning soon picture that uh, is used on... Uh, Twitch. This is what's on Twitch when my uh, stream is not going. That's what's there. Hey, there's Glory Hounds. You can see the number behind the thing behind the number is the same thing that's behind me. <laughs> it's the same asset that's behind me on on this picture here. But yeah, there's there's the Glory Hounds one, updated and ready to go for the for the next episode whenever that comes out. And. This is an example. When uh, when episode 12 of Glory Hounds came out, um, it was a stream. But, uh, oh, there it goes. My, uh, oh, God. The, yeah, apparently the Hasty Knight's fucking complete, Despa. So I, 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 that's, that needs to, to, that needs to be updated as well. My uh, webcam crashed again. That's why I'm I'm stood still. Um, but yeah, the this is the thumbnail for Glory Hounds. It's completely still. Uh, the Glory Hounds thumbnail, I'm sorry, is uh, customized as opposed to still looking like this. Um, we like the squares, blue or green. It was pink too at one point. And there's remember the flowers. Um, this is the Lookout Subathon when it was just Lookouts, and then this is the one that we've got right now. And uh, so, what I'm going to do now is just move Lookouts up. And then I don't believe Grand Theft Auto V is actually in this yet.